everybody. Welcome back to the Dice Cult for episode 17 of On the Backs of Gods. I am your DM, Jillian, and our players, same as always, we have Frank, Kyle, Mac, Josh, Abby, and Christo. <laughs> Got absorbed in like the pretty, like gorgeous new frame that we've got going on, I think. Ooh. Um, I was busy thinking about how um, Josh hurt my feelings on the Saturday stream. <laughs> you know, that is true. And we might I, want to address that slightly. I'll address it. Um, I am an unbiased DM, and if he dies, he dies. You know, Fair what enough. You, what are you going to do if, he's, if he dies, he dies? Um, no. I'm unbiased. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, I'll go ahead and give a quick recap of last session. And I think we'll jump back into it. We left off at kind of a spicy moment, if I do say so myself. So last session, we started in the terrible vines where we've been for who knows how long. Um, there were some hushed conversations inside and outside of the tiny hut. Uh, Bragi had not returned after the long rest. The group decided to push forward, finding evidence that Bragi had made his way forward, but not receiving any information from him. Um, you later received a message from him um, requesting that you be quiet. Um, that was not exactly heated, uh, but you know, you, guys, you, you did something. Uh, Bragi then returned to the group where three party members turned on him, um, assuming or um, having some concerns that he either may not be Bragi or something is wrong. Um, as you continue forward, Bragi turns to Saga, she disappears, and you are all greeted by the horrible scream of a banshee, um, knocking two of you to the ground. Uh, Saga is then returned unaffected. You all are able to scare the creature away, and you continue forward. You can hear the wind behind you as this thing follows in pursuit. And right at the end of the vines, you know you're there. You can smell the fresh air and feel the, the tiniest amount of wind. I asked for a charisma saving throw from Fen. That is when all of you exited the vines and entered into what seems to be a pretty sparse forest. There's actually grass. Um, it's not dark and squishy like the type you had seen inside the valley. The trees look like they're actually made of wood uh, and do not seem to be made of that horrible sort of charcoal texture um, that you had become accustomed to for many weeks. After you exit, Fen places a hand on Gorbjorn's shoulder. He then climbs on to the automated sled. Gorbjorn follows him. Um, they start to move in the opposite direction on said sled. Saga, kind of in confusion, throws up a stone wall in front of them. And that is where we left off with um, them kind of crashing into the wall a bit and Fen turning to face Gorbjorn smiling wide and then kissing him deeply on the mouth. Um, what would you guys like to do? We must that... take our escape. To go now. Come on, uh, Nana's going to start running after those two. You'd if better I get back here. Slide. Immediately, Gobion, Fen. Um, like, you... She's trying to like lean into like the big sister kind of vibe that she's had with Gorbjorn. But she's got this tone of voice that Gorbjorn will know, and I think Fen will also know. That is just like, she's lost her patience. Stop fucking around, get back on track, or we're going to have a problem kind of attitude. And she's trying to lean into that to make them stop, come back. Stop, come no closer. We've been in those vines for who knows how long. We've had our fun. 
We're out now. We're going our way. What? Well, why? For what reason? Why? Why would we stay anywhere near them? Near whom? Near those vines. We're not going to stay near those vines. This is too close for comfort. We're going home. We have a direction to move in. Do you not remember? Away from vines. <laughs> yes, obviously. Can you point the way back home? I point? <laughs> Does that look anywhere remotely like... I'm assuming... Nana has seen the sun rise and fall so many times over Galunder, she could see, like, the direction that it um, ought to be in her sleep. I'm going to say, um, you're going to roll survival for me, Nana, but the thing is, you haven't seen the sun in days. That's also true. Okay. <laughs> and you cannot see the sun, really, from where you are. All right, that's fair. That's fair. But, I mean, like, it's daylight, no? And I can kind of get a sense for what direction the cast is coming from? Well, you don't know what time of day it is. Yeah, that's true too. Okay, all right. Hold a natural 20! <laughs> um, Gorbjorn, go ahead and roll a d20 for me. 10. Okay. So you, Nana, you have a pretty good idea where you think Galunder probably is. You have That's a pretty okay. good assumption. It's probably that away. Um, you see Gorbrain kind of squint and kind of kind of look around and points. It's not wrong. It's not at, it's not like super precise, but also once again you cannot see the sun and you can't see those things, but it's not the, it's not like the opposite direction. It's All right. pretty close, but not exact. But I don't know if it can be expected to be fully exact. Come on, they're right. already slowing us down. Let's go. I, I've already tried to pick up the sled and try to get it uh, going. Nana is going to try to, like, get a spear into the sled's control panel. You, oh, no, don't... No. There are is... two bodies in front of it currently. Um, uh, she's front. not going to throw it. She's going to try to like dart between them and get it in there. Okay, so what I tackle her down. As, I'm tackling her down. <laughs> yeah, as soon as the spear comes, <laughs> as soon as the spear comes out, what I'm, I'm hearing, stepping between Nana and Gorbjorn. What I hear is that we're rolling initiative. I'm zipping around I'm, them. I'm, I'm not trying to fight them. Give everybody roll initiative. Fine. Fine. I want Fine. initiative here. I rolled another red twenty. What the hell, dude? Okay. Um, okay, no. on the silly things. This is going to not last. I promise you that. Okay, Nana, what's your initiative? Uh, my initiative... Uh, oh, fuck, I just had it. Sorry. Technical difficulties. Go on to somebody else. And what's your initiative? 23. 8. <laughs> Roshan. Muted. 18. Tordre. 18. Ooh. Gorbjorn. <laughs> Eight. All right. I actually, with Saga. my initiative of plus three, is 23. Uh, Saga, what do you got? Five. Perfect. Not last. <laughs> um, one moment. I rolled a three. <laughs> I know that feel. Let's put Nana back in the initiative because she got kicked out, I guess. Um, 23. Okay. We are starting the initiative with, I would like to know the dexterity modifiers of Fen and Nana, please. Three. Three. Oh, of course. I'd like both of you to roll a d20, please. Ooh. Let's roll. 11. I rolled an 11. I would like you to roll another d20. What's happening? Next time. <laughs> a nightmare world. <laughs> 17. Okay, that was a nine. Fine, okay. fine. So long as we're not in this spooky jinx world anymore. <laughs> okay, so um, Fen, you are going first. You are currently um, 
at the front of the sled. So you are in charge of controlling it. It is currently like against this wall. Nana is about 10 feet away. Saga is also about 10-ish feet away. Okay, I'm readying an action. I'm not pulling a weapon, but I'm readying an action. Okay, what action would you like to ready? As soon as Nana comes near Gorbjorn, I'm going to backhand slap her. Perfect, thank you. Wow. And it is dismissive and condescending manner as I can. I love it, thank you. Um, you are holding your action. Um, if you would like to, you could use your movement to at least get from like stuck against the wall. As, as soon as the spear comes out, I'm interposing myself between Nana and Gorbjorn. Okay, so you're gonna save. Okay, cool, gotcha. Um, Nana, what are you doing? I wanna zip around Gorbjorn and Fen and get at the sled. Cool, um, Fen, go ahead and roll me an attack roll, please. Unarmed strike. Uh, do I apply uh, a strength I'm modifier? Gonna... Strength modifier, okay. Um, that is a 14. Uh, does that hit your armor class? It hits exactly my armor class. Okay, how much damage do you do on a slap? I... One plus strength mod. Uh, sorry, one plus strength was so one point of damage. Um, Fen turns and slaps the shit out of you um, when you run to the front and then is going to take a step between you and Gorbjorn. Um, you are welcome to still keep doing something, but um, Fen steps forward and slaps you hard in the face. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on with you but I'm going to figure it out, but not before I make sure you don't take off without us. And she's going to uh, stab her spear into the console on the on the sled thing. Not sleddy. <laughs> My sled. I'm going Y'all to are going to be able to outrun all of us if you get on this thing. It's not <laughs> happening. Hmm? Who wanted a cool magic sled anyways? Roll an attack against the sled. I mean, I love the cool magical sled. I very much do, and I've appreciated it. But if it gets uh, them so far away from the rest of us, not good. But uh, I didn't roll well. That was a six. Okay. Um, the it's slap is like so but... off guard. Because yeah. um, okay. you can hit it, but it's also a wooden object. You don't hit as hard as you would have liked. Okay. So the slap just is so shocking. Fen has never laid a hand on you. Yeah, this is... It is, just, it is incredibly shocking. Um, that is, unless you have a bonus action. I mean, I get two attacks per action. By all means, take your second attack. I would love to. No, it's in that one. Yeah, it's just the shock of I it. I told you, it wasn't gonna last. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Um, it's done. Um, also, just a reminder, people are welcome to just use their turns to just move or talk if they would like to. Um, just because I played the spooky battle music does not mean yeah. it must be spooky battle. Battle ready. Uh, just because I played the music and have a battle <laughs> horn. Uh, mm. For sure. Yeah. Like it doesn't mean it's necessarily a battle, right? Uh, using my bonus action. Uh, you already did it to attack, correct? I, I get two attacks per action. Oh, then go ahead. And What's then I also have my bonus action. My bonus action, I'm going to cast... Um, yeah, I'm gonna cast Hunter's Mark on Fen. Okay, cast Hunter's Mark on Fen. Roshan. Um, Roshan uh, would move up. I don't know how much space is in between them, but probably uh, cover up to 30 feet uh, as long as it doesn't take me too close. Fen's a, Fen's a little slappy right now. Mm hmm. Um, I get noticed. Too close to slappy hands here. Yeah. yeah. Can't get too close to these slappy hands. Um, and Ro. What's up? So, where are you trying to get to? Are you trying to keep your distance or are you moving in? Like 15 feet away. Okay. That's good. Cool. Um, and Ro will just ask, uh, Fen, Gorbjorn, what's going on? Is that, is that you? And that's mm. it. Who else would it be? You need to get out of here. Go. Tordrick. Mm. Tordrick is tripping. 
Um, uh, <laughs> not that he's annoyed from drinking his tongue, but um, he's, he's at a loss for words. And then he, he begins to think about all the training that he's had as a, as a, as a free community and, and uh, jumps up. Uh, is, is there a rock somewhere where he can get some height? You know what? Probably, yeah. Or at least like an overturned tree or something. You can definitely... Right. Something where he can uh, kind of climb up and uh, takes a good sip of his <clears throat> of alcohol. And then he just starts just charging in on, on one of his sermons that he was taught about unity and the importance of unity. And everybody needs to kiss and make up. Wait, that might be the wrong words. But, you know, <laughs> and it, <laughs> he just... He just goes off on on how um, we're not going to get anywhere and we're all going to die. We should be thinking of only one thing right now, and that's returning the body uh, for proper burial of our dead brother. Uh, and he goes off on that. Okay. Um, right out of the lead. Go ahead and roll me persuasion with advantage. Just to, just to see how deep and moving this is. Give me, give me. Uh, uh, I'm 11. That's oh. fine. Oh, yeah. You are definitely starting to pick up pace as you stand up, um, giving an extra like good foot or so to your height um, and begin to talk about the meaning of unity and all of us being together uh, and that we have a goal. All right. Gorbjorn. So Ben's on the sled and Nana's trying to attack it, right? Yes, Nana just made attacks against the sled. So I'm going to hop on right behind Fen, mm -hmm. and I'm going to rage, and then uh, first attack, I'm going to grapple uh, Nana. Okay. Uh, that is... Roll athletics, Nana. All right. Uh, Total is 22. Mm. My athletics roll was an 11. Okay, Nana is uh, officially grappled. Yep. And then from the grapple, I'm just gonna like throw her to the ground. Okay. Um, or I I'm sh sure I that Gorbjorn and Nana have like play tussled in the past. Is this anything like that? I mean, you just got slapped in the face and the dude just kind of yeah. like football punted you onto the ground. So yeah. that's the most normal thing you've seen today. No. So like Gorbjorn would like come up from the side and get her in a headlock and then like move her like 10 feet away and then just throw on the ground and get back onto the sled. Uh, but Excuse you! Attack to, or grapple check kind of thing. Uh, that would be a 20 to throw you on the ground. Um, yeah, Nana roll against that athletics for okay. this for the grapple and then the push. Another 11. Um, Nana is pushed back another 10 feet and then you make your way back to the sled. She can get an attack of opportunity if she wants, but you're welcome mm. if you'd like to. And I try to like swing at his legs with the haft of my spear to trip him up. Um, you may or may not trip him up, but you can aim for the legs if you would like to. I, I want to emphasize I'm not using the spearhead here. Okay. Not a That's a net 20. <laughs> and they're yeah. back. The 20s are back. I don't know what's happening with this dice set this week, y'all, but something weird's going on. Oh, damage. Okay. Connection made. Say again? I said connection made. That's some good rolling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, it's two points of damage. Okay. So one. <laughs> so one whole bonk of damage. Fine. That's okay. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm trying to trip you. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm trying to hurt you. Um, <laughs> trying to get you on the ground. Okay, Gorbjorn, you make your way back to the sled. Um, yeah, it uses... You could put a couple feet of movement into moving the sled if you'd like to. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you get it from out from behind the wall, and it is now in position that it could technically go forward. All right. Saga. Um, how far away is everybody from each other? Um, Fen and Gorbjorn are about 10 feet away from you. Roshan's 10 feet away the other way. Nana, 15 the other way. Tordrick, 15 the other way. Okay, so are, are Fen and, and Gorb, 
Bjorn standing next to each other? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to run up to them, and I'm going to say, Stop! Let's let's talk about this! And I'm going to cast Boulder, um, and I'm going to distance spell it, and make a ten-foot, like, a uh, cube around us wall going like up into like as high as I can. So it's another 10 feet. So it's a 10 foot cube gate around the, the three of us. No! You are now stuck inside of this cube. Yes. Um, and just to be safe, I'm going to pull like the top of the cube really almost closed. No! I just don't want him to just jump out because Gorbjorn's really tall. <laughs> Get it. Um, okay. There's only one way out of here. I'm just, just guys, Sissa, please. Let's just talk about this first. We can leave. We just need to figure out what's going on. Did you close yourself in there with just them? Yes, I did. It's just me. I love her. Um. Just, uh, they, Just no, like, I'd be is... afraid for them. <laughs> <laughs> everyone is too far away for me to chaos do anything magic, else. Chaos magic! Chaos magic! Oh chaos god, magic. yeah. <laughs> Just don't make me explode. Guys, I don't want to explode. Just do we talk? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder... Oh my god. I need... I need Tordrek to make a charisma saving throw, please. Eleven. Okay. Um, you get a feeling, Tordrek, and it's not, it's not an imposing energy, it's not an aggressive energy, but you feel something kind of move into your body, and it almost is like a gentle sort of moving you backwards. Um, so you are kind of looking through tunnel vision out your own eyes, mm -hmm. and, um, you all, um, the people who are outside of the cube. Um, Tordrek, you kind, of, you kind of watch him stumble a little bit. Um, okay. Um, hello. Uh, uh there's a problem. Um, who wants that? Um, there's, it's, um, inside them. And that is the end of that turn as you watch um, um, Tordrick kind of like moving like kind of quickly from foot to foot and arms kind of flailing ever so slightly um, as uh, he seems to be um, worried about something um, <laughs> um, and is going to actually, um, no, 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 that's good for now. Um, and you watch kind of just like flaily hands. Um, one moment, one moment. Um, Fen, it is your turn back at the top of the initiative. Uh, looking around, starting to panic because there's, once again, we're confined in walls. Uh-huh. Uh, did you do this? Did you make these walls? And I just... Grab Saga and slam her against the wall. Okay, we're gonna do um, opposed athletics. This is a bit of a- Is Cinnamon wrong? I'm not struggling. You're just gonna let him? Well, I don't wanna, uh, this is too strange. I don't- uh... Um, either roll against it or be, be slammed. It's, I mean, I, I don't want to. You have advantage because you're right next to me. <laughs> No, not you, Saga, sorry, but... <laughs> oh my god! Not you! <laughs> I'll, I'll roll the advantage. And it's the same roll. It's a 21 to hit. Yeah, no, uh, I'm, I wasn't even trying to yeah. like, um, block Saga it. is not going to attempt to fight this as you slam Saga back against the, the mold earth. Dispose of her. It stays up. Bring it's it. gonna stay. It stays up. It doesn't go down. It stays up for an hour. I can't take it down. Bring Stop. it down. Bring it down. I can't. Draw my bow. Ah! Saga! They're gonna kill me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um. 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 I. I'm gonna. Bring uh, it. Um. 
and down. I, yeah, no, I can't do anything. I can't do yeah. anything. Um, I'm ready that action. If the next thing is not to drop these walls, then that's not gonna go well. All right, Nana. Then what the hell are you doing? What would Neville think? Um, Nana is kind of, she's obviously losing it more than a little. She kind of like frowns on Tordricht. She's got a lot of angry energy. She's not trying to point it at Tordricht, but there's a lot of angry energy coming off of this person as she comes up on Tordricht and kind of like grabs him by the lapels and is like, what do you know? What's happening? What's going on? Um, you watch as Tordrick starts, um, you start shaking, Tordric starts screaming. Um, just, just, he's screaming and kind of, not fighting against you, but he's screaming. I'm sorry, I just, uh, I saw them do it, so I tried, I, I just wanted to help. What? Oh, sorry. I just wanted to <laughs> Well, no, yeah, obviously, but like, I'm assuming the tone is kind of off, even if the voice is the same, no? Um, Dave, tone's a little weird. Um, Who are you? What are you? <laughs> what are you talking about? Please! I need to help my people! Um, uh, hello, I, I'm Loria. Um, and that is as much as uh, the talking can happen. That's fair, that's fair, but... <clears throat> So good at my deep voice, and then I lost. <laughs> oh, it's me. Oh. <laughs> you need me, Lovia. Um, anything else, Nana? You went over. Um, um I, I went, went over. Tordrek, that's a good chunk of your movement. Yeah. Uh, how far away was Tordrek from the box? From the box? About 20 feet away, and you okay. did 15 feet of movement to get to Tordrek. Okay. And how big is the box that Saga made? About a 10 foot box. Okay. 10 foot square. Right. Um, 15 feet away from there. Okay. Um, I want to... What do you I doing? want to swap out my spear for my bow and arrow. I'm not going to attack right now, but I figure like if I'm going to be at distance from the box, I need to be able to make something happen if it comes down or if I hear trouble in there. Okay. Um, you ready uh, your bow? Um, hoping that maybe you get an opening or can do something, but currently you are just looking at these walls and Saga be like, they're going to kill me. <laughs> um, all right. Roshan. Um, Roshan will say, Saga, you can, you can let them out, uh, and I will, and Roshan will prepare a second level spell. Okay. Ooh. Ready in action. Yep. Um, okay. It is now Tordrek's turn. Um, and you see, now let go. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Cleric. Um, we need we need to go. And um Tordrek hops off of the tree and starts to um also make a beeline um towards the walls. Uh hello, Mr. Cleric. Um I have to leave you because it could hurt me, but you can do it and I believe in you. Thank you very much. Um and Tordrek, you come back into your body looking at the stone wall, um, the dirt wall in front of you, you you heard everything that happened. It was kind of like like sleepwalking where you could kind of hear murmured talking and you saw everything that happened and you could hear yourself telling you that um, you're able to handle this and ran you over to where the enemies are and then um, left your body and now you are in control again. Um, you still have an action if you would like to do something, ready something, they just used your movement. We're just, gonna, we're just gonna pull out his um, his warhammer and shield and 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 just stand there like mm, maybe I shouldn't drink as much as I did or something. Um, <laughs> that combination didn't work, so he's like, mm. and he's uh, and if if anything like 
like if that wall explodes or if, if I'm able to, I'm just going to ready an action that if, if somebody needs to get knocked out so this fight can stop, he's going to knock him out. Okay. Um, you ready just an action? Fighting up. Hit the mouse up. Okay. Torbjorn. Um, so I'll say to Finn, your will was always weak, and I like take his spot and push him back a bit. Uh -huh. Like, do you not love me? And then I'll uh, go to attack um, Ray. All right. Or Saga, sorry. Go for it. Uh, that is a 16 to hit. Uh, I believe I put my um, mage armor on. So, oh, no, that, yeah, that hits. Never mind. Nice, so. We need her to drop these walls. She is our worst problem. Uh, that's 16 damage for the first attack. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> second one. <laughs> second one fails though. Okay. As I like <laughs> hit it against the stone wall. <gasps> like, who would have thought you were our worst problem? Ah! <laughs> starts wailing on you, but the tightness of the surroundings, the second one hits into the wall before it saw it like stops right next to your head. Um, it's being stopped by the, the dirt around you. Everybody else just sees like a sword. Yes, the wall. Jesus! <laughs> Saga! All right. If that's the end of your turn, Gorbjorn, it is Saga's turn. Hey, I heard what Rashawn said, obviously, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, okay, I hope you guys can do something. Um, I'm sorry, and then I'll, I'll, I'll drop it. Um, I, I pretty much, to, to drop it, I have to cast it, um, a, like, I think I have to cast it again to drop it. Oh, I can dismiss it with an action. So yeah, I'll use my action to dismiss it. Okay, um, um dismiss it? Yep. Um, Tordrick, can I you use my it? ready to action? Uh, what was your ready to action? I drew my bow at Saga. But I think you said if my next action wasn't. It was not to Okay, take but I've got my bow there. drawn. Yeah, your bow is out. Okay. Yeah. But she did drop it. Um, okay. The walls go down. Finn is I didn't right. Wanna, I did not want to attack bow. Saga. <laughs> With a bow aimed at Saga. Um, you can use your ready to action now to swing if you'd like to. And, yeah, Saga looks hurt. Um, it, mm, um, instead of swinging, may I just jump on it? Uh, jump a cross at him is he close enough for me to do a dwarf launch and uh just try to knock him over um yeah i could say i'm fine with your ready to action have being like uh like a tackle a grapple um yeah. so i need opposed athletics between fen and tordrek i feel like he'd like launch himself forward with his hammer to help increase his momentum <laughs> right absolutely <laughs> um all right um athletic checks oh, mm -hmm. right. to 13. Um, can I use my inspiration to roll again? I rolled a one. Woohoo! <laughs> use that uh, inspo. I'm glad I have that. All right, let's try that one again. I roll again. Oh, well. Oh, God, I'm a better. All right, so roll the six. <laughs> okay. Um, so you don't, you're like on Fen. You have hands on him, but it's not like he is grappled. Um, but you are now. I landed his ankles, goddamn. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're at the ankle. <laughs> You're tying his shoes. Don't do it! Don't do it! Don't do it! <laughs> okay, and uh, Roshan, you also had an action ready. Yes, uh, Roshan will point at Gorbjorn and say, You, come on over here and have a conversation with me, civilly, and I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw. I don't know who's rolling it, whether it's Gorbjorn or. 18. Oh, <laughs> suck an egg. <laughs> Yeah! Suck an egg! Suck my eggs! <laughs> <laughs> That's worse. <laughs> Hashtag cursed phrases I didn't think I'd hear today. <laughs> Sorry, I can't get over just... <laughs> suck an egg! Boo! Boo, you suck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, boy. Oh. One moment, my apologies. Uh, I oh. know we're in the heat of fun battle, but one. Oh. Now the spell is dropped. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. I and wish I had a bonus action. 
I wish I was a cool person with a bonus action. <laughs> I wish I had bonus actions, like all the cool kids. Yeah. Sorry. Um, uh, it seems I didn't have this ready like a fool. Oh, sorry, Saga. I forgot my rage damage. That's an extra two. <laughs> oh no! Like you could have, you could have had me out if you hit the second one. Oh god! Like yeah, Saga doesn't have a lot of hit points. No, I have nine hit points left. Oh no! We'll take two from that. <laughs> I d- no, I, I did. That's oh, okay. okay, that's with the two. Yeah. Holy! I'm a baby. Don't hurt. Um, things have changed, so I have to change the thing. Is mm. the thing. All right. Running in from the back, um, currently was not involved. Now, 100% involving themselves, seeing Saga with a bloody wound on them. Um, Broggy's running in. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. He's going for Fendus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Broggy is going to run in and he is going to cast a spell and he like winces and grips at his stomach. I need wisdom saving throws from Fen and Gorbjorn. Well. 16. Um, both of them tense up, bodies locked in place. They are currently held. Yeah! Oh, good. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> Froggy kind of just <laughs> slowly makes his way over. <laughs> are you okay? Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh. <laughs> Uh, he looks. He's Are you starting, okay? He's starting to progressively look like how he used to. Uh, oh. He looks, he's starting to look kind of bad again. Um, okay, that means we are at Ben's turn. Ben is currently held and can use um, at the end of his turn can try to break out of the hold. But besides that, that is all. Let us go. We will not be held any longer. We were held for too long. Let us go. And tries to break out. Okay, wisdom, please. Wisdom saving. Yes, please. 18. Um, you just break out, um, um, clenching your teeth. You break the hold person, but that is the end of your turn. All right, Nana. Nana is going to run into very close proximity with Gorbjorn and Fen. Is there a way she can get them within a 15-foot radius of herself? Um, you could get right up on them if you wanted to. Cool! I'm gonna do that, and doing that, uh, I'm going to lock eyes with the two of them. First Fen, and then Gorbjorn, and, um, Nana says, I've had enough of games and guessing. I want to see the truth. And she casts Zone of Truth. Okay. I need, um, how big is it? Because you got a few people in here. 15 foot radius sphere centered on a point of my choice within range. Um, the range is 60 feet, but I want to be right up in here because okay, I'm done with your, having Saga you take the- as yourself in the center. Yes. Um, okay, I need, Saga, Gorbjorn, Fen, Cordrick, Roshan, and Bragi to make a, what is it, wisdom? I believe it is wisdom saving throw, yes. No, What's charisma, it? sorry, charisma. Oh, charisma, all right, then yes, that's 17. Uh, 17 saves. 21. <laughs> 21 does save, yes. I'm just like, I'm here to tell the truth. <laughs> uh, well, and, uh, 12 just saves, 15 saves. 16. Oh. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> this is gonna be the least impressive zone of truth there ever was. Um, <laughs> it's the same. Um, yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, Just Brog- like every other zone of proof, truth. Froggy <laughs> got like a 26, does that save? Oh yeah, that, that <laughs> definitely. 
definitely. Let me let me check. Let me check. Wait, wait. Double check. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. I okay. think that that just barely oh, saves. Close. Yeah, no, yeah. You're ooh, real squeaked in there. Cool. Um, okay. Fine. Um, did anyone fail? No, I don't think anybody did. No. No, it's fine. Boo. <laughs> I was, it's it's fine. Your it's heart was fine. in the right place. <laughs> You know yeah, what? Well, that would have been really good, though. It would have been. If, if, if only you used all your 20s, they're gone now. <laughs> I mean, I don't get to roll on that one is the problem. Yeah, that's the issue. Um, well, else? no, I probably would have rolled shit anyway. It's fine. Anything else? Um, I want to... I, I can definitely feel that the spell didn't go off the way I wanted it to, but I want to um, get in close on Fen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to grab him by by the collar and of his, uh, like of his cloak and like hold him as tight as I can and lock eyes with him. What's the name of your village? Home. We're going home. Yes, home. What's the name of it? We're going elsewhere. We're not staying here. Answer the goddamn question, Fen. We're, we're going home. We're not staying here. If you keep evading me, I will stab you. I don't want to, but goddamn it, I will. Don't make me. That's where I'm going to stop you two. Um, Roshan. Uh, Roshan will turn his focus to, uh, to Fen this time and says, it seems like your lover doesn't want to cooperate. Uh, I suggest you stand here and have a nice conversation with us. And, uh, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Is that a charm effect? It is. You don't need to, oh, I have advantage of just being charmed. All right. So, 13? Uh, no, you have been suggested. Ooh, full suggested. And the suggestion was to come to you? Was that what it was? Have a uh, to have just a nice conversation with us. Okay, um, on your turn, um, you will have to have a nice conversation with them. It does not have to be long, but you have to complete the action of having a nice conversation. Okay. Perfect. Anything else, Roshan? Um, that's it. Tordrek. All right. Um, Tordrek has all this chaos going above him. He's on the ground. He had his hands around, or arms around um, Finn, telling him to stop, stop, don't do it. Um, looking up, um, uh, Ray is, sorry, jeez. Wow. <laughs> um, one second. Um, we have, uh, geez, I'm having a brain fart right now. Everybody, brain fart, yay! All right. Yay! Sorry. Um, <laughs> I see that, um, sorry. somebody's injured. I'm sorry. Gosh, I just seen your name pop up again. And so I'm, I'm, okay. I see someone injured in the group, and I must, yeah, exactly. Um, and I can't think of your fucking character's name right now. I'm not going Saga. Oh, that's right. I don't know. Oh my God. It's okay. Anyway, so, so anyway, so he goes to uh, he goes crawling uh, on his hands and knees over to her to the healer. Um, okay. So he doesn't get in the middle of battle by standing up or middle of a confrontation because he just uh, it's too much for him to handle. Uh, everybody here that is like his friends and family all yelling at each other. So he goes and crawls on his hands and knees over and, and places a, a hand on her on her leg to heal her. Okay. Go ahead and heal. Uh, 20 back. Ooh. Okay. Ooh, there you go. I'm full again. Yay. <laughs> I'm alive. Cough uh, up the last of the blood. Okay. Uh, anything else, Tordrick? That's it. All right. Gorbjorn, you cannot do anything, but you can attempt to break free of the hold person. Uh, 16. That does not cut it. Poop. Um. Okay. 
Sorry, I had to use my brain for a moment, guys. You know the struggle. <laughs> I do. I hella do. Um, for a moment, you can look into Gorbjorn's eyes and, um, uh, Fen, he is going to try and catch your gaze. It is a look of fear. And it kind of, it's a feeling of just kind of a shake of the head. Can I do that when I'm held? Um, it's just in your eyes. Okay. Motion of it. <laughs> the emotion of a shaking of a head. <laughs> you know. Like... Uh, the emotion of lost hope. <laughs> the emotion of. Oh, <laughs> Okay, that is Gorbjorn's turn. Saga, um, Gorbjorn is still held. Um, is there a spot that both Gorbjorn and Fen would be within 10 feet of, but other people wouldn't be? Like it would just hit Gorbjorn and Fen? Or is everyone standing right up next to each other? I mean, everybody's much next to each other, but if it's something you can aim or pick a spot, you could probably just hit the two of them. Yeah, I want to pick slide. a spot within 10 feet of just uh, Gorbjorn and Finn. That's doable, yes. Okay. Then, uh, I'm gonna I'm just, jeez, I don't know if this is gonna help, but I'm just trying my best. I, I can't convince them. Alright. Um, I'm just gonna say uh, stop, uh Lady, Lady Seder wants to just talk to you guys. We'll just figure out what's going on, and then we'll just talk about it, and we can, we can, we can go with you. We can leave. We just need to figure out where we're going first. Um, oh look, Lady Seder's here, and we're gonna cast pyrotechnics, and there's gonna be a big blast of light uh, that those two look at, and they have to make a con save to not be blinded. Nineteen. Oh gosh. Oh wow. Yeah, I got good con. <laughs> I'm full of calm. 14. Fail. Okay. Ben is blinded. <laughs> Ghost is that, blind man must have is conversation. Is that an attack on me? It is not an, I mean, it's just a non-magical flame. It, I mean, it's but just does a it snap no. me out of my suggestion? No. no. It's just a dazzling display do, of colors. It doesn't do damage. Okay. Yeah. You're just blind. Um, <laughs> I'll have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I guess something. I'll have a blind conversation. I don't need to see, I guess. Okay, uh, anything else, Saga? Uh, oh. Just, um, yeah, you want to make a roll for me as well? No. Yeah, but I'd like you to. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, first I'm going to roll my wild magic search for the pyrotechnics. Yeah, that's what I'd love to see. That's what okay. I want. <laughs> that's what I was hoping for. Okay, we're good. That's a 13. Okay, that was, um, that was my request. Okay. Uh, and then with the charisma saving throw, I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine, but I do want to do a Tides of Chaos on that one so that it it's really fine. Um, I, I think I have, um, I don't know how many of those I have, like... I think they're refilled currently, unless yes. you use one in that combat, but I don't know. No. So this is, this is the first. I don't know where to keep track of this. I'll just put it on paper, like, a, <laughs> like an old like a person. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm glad I did. One of them's a natural one. Okay, um, uh, 21. Ha! And what is this for? The, the charisma save? The, oh, I see, I see where our confusion, like, I was asking you to roll for, um, the wild magic surge. I did. Is it yes. 13? I wasn't asking for a charisma roll. But didn't you ask? No. She, she just wanted her, the, the chaos roll. <laughs> no, I just wanted it's chaos. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. I was just—I uh, like, don't understand what's happening, but I—I I I thought you said. I thought you said okay. It may—it may have just I'm, glitched I, in the. I don't know, uh, but you're good. No, no. When need. you said chaos, I think I heard charisma, and so then uh, I went off on that whole thing, and you guys sense. just went with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please move on. <laughs> so yeah, it, <laughs> please. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Roshan, you're up. Um, I would like to start off the co- well... Hmm. 
I would, I'll just wait until Fen approaches me to start having a conversation. Well, he's blind. <laughs> that's okay. The conversation can wait. Yes. Until to... he's not blind? Yeah, why not? He has to wait to have a nice conversation. So he has to say in his head, what's a nice conversation? And that would be possibly face to face, looking at each other, having a nice conversation. I think part of it was he had to walk to Roshan too. Yes, he has he to find have a conversation with me, something like that. Yeah. Um, a nice conversation. conversation. Are you are you just you're just gonna you're gonna wait for him? Yep. Cool. Um, Tordrek, you're up. <clears throat> Does Saga look much better? Yes, Saga's looking hundred <laughs> percent better. Okay, good. Um Tordrek will go look to see if anybody else is uh, injured. Nana took one point of damage from the slap. It was more to her pride <laughs> than her actual HP, so it was psychic damage. <laughs> yeah, I think like, everybody's okay currently. You see, like mind um, cleansing spells, or then, then he will he will crawl on the ground until he gets away from everyone, and then stands up and and looks over the group and sees who's where, and, and makes sure that nobody's ran off and you know done some crazy shit like <laughs> just happened a little bit ago. So he's, <laughs> he's like, going, that, that one's here, that one's here, that one's here. He's gonna take it down. Uh, takes uh, the, the spot of a teacher on a field trip and just like, okay. Oh, yes. Everybody... I mean, Nana's got her hand real aggressive up in Fen's collar. So if the okay. teacher wants to tell somebody off. Right. <laughs> well, I, I don't know how much I can do in my turn, but uh, he crawls away a bit, gets up, and starts counting to see who's where and make sure everybody's there and nobody's scared or, you know, something's um, missing. Yeah, you, you take stock of everybody. Um, can see that um, Gormjorn is held still in the whole person. Um, nobody seems to be injured, and you take stock of the situation and where everybody stands. Um, okay. Gormjorn, you don't know if you can get out of this. Uh, you have a little bit of movement in the jaw through clenched teeth, but that's about it. Uh, or. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the um, kitten sneeze. <laughs> you watch as Gorbjorn's head snaps to the side, then the other side, and just like a, a, like it wants to move aggressively, and there's just kind of sharp, very like isolated movements. And you watch as his eyes glaze over and seeping like smoke from the eyes and the ears. Um, this, this, the, this angry wail of a woman who just burst forth from his face, her slim elven features visible as she rips and tears, um, not physically, but pries herself from this body, this trapped, unmoving vessel, and pulls herself out, angry, Floating above him stands this vector. That is you! Me. You were controlling Gorbion! Do not speak to me, human filth! And you just hear like, like crackling of energy around her cheek. We leave now. This flesh is not worth it. We can go. Well, fine then. Go! Leave us be! And leave my friend out of it! And she points, she kind of like... Jostles Fen. I know you've done something to him. You take it back. He's his own man. He'll follow when he wants to. Um... Uh, because uh, you're being real sassy uh, to her, I would like a wisdom saving throw, please, uh, Nana. Sure. The six. Um, you are now frightened. 
hoo hoo hoo, close to there have been an issue for you. Uh, but you are just instantly racked with fear looking upon the visage of this creature in front of you. We will go, mortal, but you will not speak to me like some peasant is that understood. You. Silence. Um, she is going to turn her attention to Fen. Join me. Can Fen respond, or is? Yeah, you're not. You're not. You're not. You're not, you're not blocked up. You're uh, blind. I, I'm you're blind, charmed. but I'm also charmed. Oh, um, you you can respond. It's not like you are you. You're forced to have a nice conversation. So I'll be right with you, darling. <laughs> <laughs> um, she gnashes her teeth. Um, uh, you watch as her in front of her uh, in front of you disappears. Um, she is gone. Um, Gorbjorn, you are once again in control of your actions, having watched this like a dream. Um, and that is the end of Gorbjorn's turn. Saga, hey. Hey. Uh, would you like to do anything? Um, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no thank you. Um, I'm just, uh, yeah, uh, Nana, do I do anything? Should I hit it? Um, I, I can't hear you. I don't know. It, it, it's gone? I don't know if it's gone for good, though. I, I is don't it gonna, know. Is it gonna hurt another person? Do I... I can't tell. Probably. So should I... Yeah? I, maybe. Um, yeah. I don't know. You're sure? Yes, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll just, I. Okay, she said sure, so I'm gonna shoot it. I guess. Yeah. She, she disappeared. You can't see her. Oh, you can't. I can't see her. Okay, uh, never mind. Can... I have no idea what's going on today. Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, man. No, yeah, like she vanished. But okay. like Nana, does Nana still have the frightened condition? Now she can't see it. Yep. Yeah. Nana's still spooked. <laughs> still spooked. Still okay. very spooked. Saga, you can hold an action if you want to, or you can just step back, whatever you want. I will just, yeah, sure. I'll hold, um, I'll hold another pyrotechnics for if, um, Ben starts to run away. I can, more okay. fireworks. All right. Um, blinded, struggling a bit, compelled to go have a nice conversation with Roshan. Um, <laughs> You are going to uh, make your way over to him, which isn't too difficult. Um, Saga and Nana, do you take um, attacks of opportunity on this guy casually walking past you? No, <laughs> nah. Nana might be just like pointing her bow around, like kind of nervously. Okay. Please um, speak up. I'll have to follow your voice. I'm over here. Uh, you kind of fumble your way over a bit. Um, you are now in front of uh, the person you were supposed to have a nice conversation with. Salutations. Pleasure to meet you. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking with? My name is Calfuel, but a mortal as such as you shouldn't speak those syllables. Uh, too good for your tongue, but pleasure to make your acquaintance either way. I would like to leave now. You know, we just started having our, our conversation. I, <laughs> I've got a whole lot more questions for you. Uh, you watch as Fen's head snaps to the side, fully of completing, um, in his opinion, a very pleasant conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> and you watch as the visage of an elven man um, comes, a different elven man, um, comes forth from Fen's face up and out of his body, uh, Fen back in control, and um, you watch as the, um, this ghost looks from side to side. Um, Darling, 
darling, come back! Um, and you watch as he flips out as well. Then you are now once again in control of your body. Then falls to his knees in a bit of shame and panic. Then cannot see. <laughs> oh, no, and... at the end of your turn, you can see again. Once your turn's over. All right, well, my turn's not over, and Ben <laughs> is blind, and he's just trying like to bearings. get his bearings. He's only tangentially aware of everything that's just happened. He knows he did bad things, but he doesn't know what those things are. He doesn't know. He knows he hurt people. He doesn't know who he hurt. He just knows that he hurt his friends, and and he can't see now. And when you drop him on the ground and he's fumbling, he had his bow in his hand, he's fumbling, trying to find his arrow, and that's the end of his turn. And as you kind of fumble around um, at the end of your turn, sight finally comes back to you. Um, you guys are all welcome to drop initiative if you would like to. Am I still held? Um, uh, <laughs> is just kind of like looking at you like, I guess I could drop it now. I'm like stuck in an intimidating statue stance. Like, um, <laughs> frightened condition last. Um, after about like a minute, you are, you're okay. Um, Bragi drops the whole person because he also saw a horrible ghost burst out of your body. So he's like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that, that tracks. That's fine. Um, and he releases you from the whole person. <laughs> <laughs> Just falls straight to the floor. <laughs> Gobion, are, are you? You? I'm me. Uh. Really, really? I'm hungry. Ghost oh, didn't yeah, feed you. me. Yeah, that's Gobion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're fine. Fen? Yes, Nana. Are you okay? No. Uh. No, I don't think so. I want to make my way over here. Are we dropping initiative? Yes, we are dropping initiative. I want to make my way over to Fen. <clears throat> and kind of like way over to drop Fen. to a knee next to him and kind of like try to look him over. Drop to a knee next to him and kind of like try to try and like meet his eyes. Fen, talk to me. Is that what darkness looks like? Yes. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. It's terrifying. Now you know why I don't like taking watch by myself. <laughs> what happened? Ghosts, I think. <laughs> it, I, it looks like, I don't know. One of them had Gorbjorn. I think the other one had me. And then I think it jumped to you. Where? This is grass. Where on earth are we? We're outside. We made it out. Outside of the vines? Is this another trick? No, we're out of the valley. Look around you, Fen, look. The trees. The needles on the trees, they're, they're green. Full and healthy. Where did we leave the valley? How long have we been out? Not very long. Not even 10 minutes, I'd think. Um, the entrance is just back there. We're not going back, obviously, but. I feel like I hurt people. Who did I hurt? Don't worry yourself about it, all right? It wasn't you. Is everyone all right? I think we'll be okay. I think Bragi's going to need some rest. He had to use some magic to restrain you and Gorbjorn, but aside from that, I think by and large, we're all right. You take a glance over at Broggy. You see now that he's like kind of out of the situation. It looks like he's taking everything in and you watch that he's, he's made his way over to one of the trees and he's placed his forehead against it and he is murmuring softly to it. Um, I was going to approach him as they were kind of having that conversation and yeah. ask him if he could still see the spirits. Um, as you approach, um, you can hear he's talking in Celestial. Um, oh. So you can actually understand what he's saying. Um, it sounds like he's apologizing. And you hear him say, if you can hear me, I love you. Um, 
and then he sees you approach him. Uh, you're gonna pretend real good that I did not hear that. Oh, and... <laughs> oh. oh, I rolled. Oh right. no. We both hey. rolled terrible. Tell My me sister that. was the bad, uh, the good one at that. I've got an eight. <laughs> Ooh, let's see. I rolled. I rolled very, very poorly. Um, what does it add up to? Um, for my insight. Oh yeah, no, his insight's very high. <laughs> well, he is a god, so oh, okay. that tracks. Dude has insight. Um, for days. Uh, he looks at you, and he does not. He's like he just accepts that. Is like, yep, he didn't hear that, even though he is very sure you heard it. Okay. Um, um, I would like to ask him. Uh, did you do you see those things when they uh, went invisible or whatever? Uh, a bit. Uh, I assume they went into the ethereal plane, um, which I cannot see incredibly well. Um, but looking around, I currently don't see anything. So you don't think we're in any more danger? I mean, I wouldn't go as far as to say that, but I, I don't see them. Honestly, your friend, I think, might have better vision into the ethereal plane than I do. My, is it, is it common knowledge in the group that, uh... It may not be. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, so I'll ask him, uh, which, which friend might that be? Um, he gives a motion over to Gorgjorn. Uh, and Gorbjorn, in front of you is Loria, who is talking a mile a minute. Oh my god! Um, apologizing and saying she didn't know what to do, and she got scared, and oh. she didn't know that they were bad, and it's just a mile a minute oh. apology. Kind of like in front of you, very upset. That's oh. very sweet, but I'm also dealing with days of being possessed coming rushing at me, and I'm trying to fucking figure out what just oh. happened. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm just sitting there hearing this and I cannot comprehend what she's saying or what just happened. I'm just sitting there like shocked. <laughs> he just walks in like, I'm, just, I'm so sorry and I didn't know. And I just, I thought they were okay because I'm okay. <laughs> um, yeah, Broggy points over at Gorbjorn who you can see is having an existential crisis. <laughs> uh, I will approach Gorbjorn and ask uh do you see any any uh specters any spirits around i could see one that could go away right now <laughs> are, uh, oh. are we in danger should we do something just danger of head hurt um you watch Gloria <laughs> as she's like oh oh okay and you watch as she kind of shuffles off and oh. um, sits under a tree where she can still see you, but oh. she backs up a good bit and sits and just kind of waits. Oh. <laughs> You're kind of like looking at the grass, like, oh, like she's now kind of focusing in on other things, but then it'll turn your, her focus back to you to make sure she doesn't miss anything. Is there any oh. like clumps of snow around us at all? Yeah, you could probably find some in some of the shaded spots, it's mostly shaded. Yeah, sure, there's probably some snow and such about. Probably take a handful. <laughs> just something in my stomach. Just make sure it's not yellow. Yeah. Just crunching on snow. <laughs> no yellow snow. Uh, oh yeah, it's definitely Gorbjorn. He's fine. <laughs> I, I'll get out uh, one the the ration that I keep on me, um, and <laughs> say, uh, "You doing okay, big guy? This might taste better than." The snow. Old snow. Uh, he'll swipe it, start chewing and talking, and snow in his mouth, just like, oh, oh my god, <laughs> I, oh, my body take time to, I, body abused, body hurt, but I'm, I am fine. Uh, I'm glad we've got you both back. Yeah, good, good to hear. Uh, do. You, I mean, you look okay. Do you need healing or? No, uh, ghosts no live long, so they don't know how to do human or living things. They forget sleep, eat, you know, 
Ah, yes. I I understand. Yeah. Um, well, just just eat that up. Uh, you can take an extra, I suppose. God. Yeah, as that level of exhaustion now fully hits you, Gormjorn, uh, as you pretended to sleep a little while ago. <laughs> oh no, yeah, you're right. Um, oh my god, does Nana have that? Yeah, maybe. Gorbjorn got it. Oof. I did not sleep. Gorbjorn's had it for a bit. Yeah, Gorbjorn has had it for a hot minute. He did stay up the whole darn night. At least yeah. Nana laid down and pretended yeah, you, to I sleep. I think it attempted a bit harder. Um, even though um, exiting the valley had this intense moment of, of ghost possession and um, fear and people running about it, like just a moment of intense chaos. And now it's quiet and you can hear the birds and the wind and the leaves and it's not biting cold. It doesn't sting your cheeks as it had before. You can feel the tips of your fingers. It's almost too warm in the coats that Ave had gotten for you. You are officially outside of the valley and that is where we will take our break. Uh, uh, thank you guys for watching this far. We're gonna take a 10 minute break. Um, if you want to stick around, go grab a snack. That'd be great. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, we'll see you in 10 minutes. See y'all in 10. 10 minutes. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to On the Backs of Gods. Um, if you stuck around during the break, uh, thank you very much. And if you just got here, also, thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Um, before our break, we had a bit of a kerfuffle, a bit of a conflict between Fen and Gorbjorn and the rest of the party which was Fen and Gorbjorn wanting to leave and the rest of the party being like, don't. And uh, it turned into a bit of throwing of hands, um, which inevitably turned into two ghosts leaving their hosts of Gorbjorn and Fen and disappearing into the ethereal plane. Um, waves of exhaustion hitting people now that they are no longer being held up by just kind of like puppet strings. Um, the party kind of calms down, kind of takes back in their surroundings and can actually truly experience the fact that they are no longer in the Valley of Odin and are outside. Um, take it away, my dudes. Oh, um, uh, yeah, know what? Yeah, uh, Kyle, real fast, real quick, go ahead and uh, give us a shout out. Uh, break shout out. I just want to give a thank you to Dragon Ink Dice. Uh, the merchandise will be up soon for Dragon Ink Dice uh, at Dragon I N K Dice dot Big Cartel dot com. Uh, all of that wonderful team assaulting violence was brought to you by the <laughs> gorgeous dice right oh, here. Oh, yeah, look at those. Wow. They oh. are bespoke Fen Varmascaria themed dice with the Dice Cult logo on them. Oh, uh, that's nice. They are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, they've rolled pretty well so far uh, in the <laughs> worst possible situations. Hooray, <laughs> I guess. I'm jealous. Get out of my so, uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Katie, so much, and uh, hopefully there'll be some merchandise hitting that, uh, that site uh hopefully by the end of the month from what I'm hearing. And uh, yeah, if you visit the site, there's an FAQ page there. There's a contact page. And I think she's going to start taking some commissions. So if you want to get your hands on some absolutely beautiful dice, including a D2 uh, with the Dice Cult logo on it, uh, go ahead and check out that website. Again, that's dragoninkdice.bigcartel.com. Uh, check them out. Yay, thank you, Katie. Thank you for your beautiful dice. We love seeing them. Oh, uh, we do. Oh, they're so pretty. Truly, truly the best part of my day. Um, except when I possess people with ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys are now outside of the valley, inside of this, this wooded area. And you can see it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of sparse. It's not, not the most apparent thing, but you can see um, two lines in the ground, which you believe were formed by carts over a period of time, and that there is technically a path in here. Huh. 
What do you know? I think this passes for a road. Like people? Like people! Cuts! Uh, at the mention of, like, population, he's going to, like, try to hide he's a half-orc by, like, putting on that helmet he got from, I'll take up the name earlier, later, and then, like, covering his, like, arms and legs if he can, if anything from is exposed, off. like, gloves and all. Yeah, um, you put it on, it covers a good bit of your face, it actually covers, covers a lot of the face. Oh, wow. Uh, uh you watch his... <laughs> Dreppa, that was his name. That's right, Dreppa. Gorbjorn yes, covers himself up at the mention of civilization and people. Oh. Oh, that's right. Yes, of course, of course. Um. Um. What time is it? If you guys had to guess, like, if you guys thought on it a moment, you think it's probably like three p.m. Okay. Now that I've kind of like guesstimated that, can I refer back to my nat 20 earlier to kind of like retroactively like fine tune my mental compass, like kind of figure out about whereabouts we might be needing to head to get back to Galunder? Sure. Um, speaking of places and things and stuff, um, let, me, let me inform you. Oh, please. Uh, All of the nouns. Let me tell yes. you about the map and the place and the things. Um, and the guys on the side. Yeah. Um, you are currently at the the westernmost edge. Uh, oh. This is kind of where you're not like, you know, at the edge, but that is vaguely where you are. You are to the west of the mountain. Um, you know that if you went south for an extended period of time, and followed the road, which eventually would lead you a bit more east, you would end up back in Galunder. You also know that Erentoft is along this road, um, a bit off the beaten path. It is a coastal town, so um, you would have to take a slight detour, but it is on the way to an extent. Erentoft is probably one of, like, the closest place. Like, there's probably some maybe small communities like some person who's just like i built a house here try and move me um, <laughs> yeah it sounds about right but there's no like really declared huge cities or towns before aaron talked okay uh, you'll probably come across some like um pace places for travelers to stop um the second you start hitting more you know places where people actually can live and thrive <laughs> uh, so currently you have a vague idea where you are, and you know that vaguely your direction is south, and that Erentoft will be more west as you go. Okay. That there will be a like, hopefully, a sign. You don't know. You've you've really never been to Erentoft uh, personally. Okay. All right. Well, do I know this area well? Um. This is. It depends. Um, where you originally came from was the opposite side, I believe, but you have made your way traveling around the West. Um, do you think you would have been hanging out in coastal towns this uh, this far North? It's up to you. Uh, well, the uh, water is what saved his life, uh, Torger's life. So it, he became a hermit on the beach. Um, so, it would make sense when he got, um, I don't know, we didn't discuss where he got his training. Yeah. Uh, uh, so if that happened to be up north, then, then he would definitely have, uh, inform you know, he would have some knowledge of that area at minimum. Uh, yeah, I would say that you haven't been to Erentoft like many times, but you've at least been once. Um, you know that it's a uh, big fishing community. Um, it is probably one of the bigger coastal communities uh, that is not um, in um, the coast of the night. Uh, it is um, farther north than that. Uh, but it's, it's pretty big. It's a big area for fishing. Um, it's a big area for coastal transport. You all are aware that not a lot of um, boating happens far from the coast. Um, half from superstition, half from, um, I've seen big corpses of gods, I'm not going to risk it. Um, 
the continent itself is pretty self-contained. Um, not a lot of, you know, far sea travel. Uh, but people do use boats to kind of make their way around, um, depending on where they're going. So do I know how far we are from water from here? From here, um, you think to get to Arentoft, which would probably be your first uh, good chance at getting to an actual place uh, on the coast, you think it is going to take you about um, four days, five days, depending on the pace. Mm, I kind of know this area a little bit. Mm. Yeah. Um, uh, the water's it's not too far away, three or four days. A lot of water, a lot of fishing, <laughs> people, ale, fun times, a break. It'll, it'll be nice, uh, definitely, than all we've been through, but... All right. Tordric, if you know this area fairly well, I want to, I want to firm up our, our plan from here, because... In Ave's will, what he asked us to do after retrieving the artifact was to visit uh, his friend Dagwood in um, in the town of... Uh, and she kind of like pulls out the scroll, thumbs through it a little bit. Um, yes, um, Arentoft. Arentoft, that's right. Um, we need to make our way to Arentoft, and I think if, if I'm not missing my mark on where we are, we're going to need to head westward towards the coast and southward in order to make our way there. He's meant to give Ave his last rites, but Ave also mentioned that he wanted someone to wear his chieftain's crest, and I have a sinking feeling it might be important if not necessarily for the last rites themselves, then certainly for when we get back to Galunda and go to cremate him. Tordrek, could, could you still do that spell? See if you can maybe feel where, what direction Ave's crest is. Mm. I'm really tired. Of course, of course, long. I'm sorry. The guys kissing and then going crazy. And, uh, <laughs> oh, and the guys kissing just go <laughs> <laughs> can't have none of them gays up in here. Uh, <laughs> it was just a surprise. <laughs> uh, it was a surprise for everyone me. involved. Believe me, it was but. the last thing I ever wanted to see, frankly, from those two in particular. But, um, oh, Sean, what are they talking about? <laughs> but, um, uh, I. <laughs> If I if I rest, I can I, attempt to perform that miracle. Of course, whenever Only you have the ability. Pretty close. It's got to be real close. Um, uh, so if it's not close, it won't. I can try. Them. I will try. If you can try, then that's all I can ask. Thank you. Um, Roshan fades. Uh, <laughs> he's like, oh, I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Uh, nope. Mm, no clue. And that's a 13. Still? To, 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 uh, to lie. Oh. <laughs> His sister really was the good liar. Look, I got a 7 to insight, so... Uh, ah! all right, I'm, I'm Doesn't happy know any that. better. <laughs> You're like, oh, cool. Um, I mean, no. you remember a moment where your face was very close to Gorbjorn's, but you're like, I don't recall, like, kissing. Um, but you're like, there was a point where we were really close. Um, so I feel like a scrape on my cheek from his tusks. <laughs> marks, just like little dimples. A scratch. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, would you guys like to start trying to make your way south um, uh, as best you can? Yeah. Um, okay. No, 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 I have a question. Yes, yes, what is the uh, saga? I'm sorry, I might be wrong. Does the, the crest, does it have to be the original one or could we make a new one? Or, I, I guess. mean, 
I can't say for certain. I don't know anything. Would I know if Ave's crest was like something special? Would it have been made by, I don't know, the um, the Ancestors. Gothi, Gothi Runa? Or would it have been just like something that kind of gets made as it's needed? Is it a one of a kind thing? Um, I'm gonna... I'm going to say no need to roll for this. Um, you know that it is, um, you don't know how exactly special it is, it is definitely one of a kind. It is the chieftain's crest for Galunder and was originally worn by your father. Unfortunately, Saga, it was a family heirloom. It, it belonged to my father, Hemming before it belonged to Ave, and I don't know if there's any significance to it. I don't know if it's magical. I don't know if it has any importance in the ceremony or if it's just symbolic. I don't know. All I know is it's it's in his will. Yes, okay. I, I just wasn't sure. Um... I understand. I appreciate it. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to make one, but I'm not sure if it would necessarily do for for the original the thoughts yeah. very very kind though thank you yeah for i just make lady satyrs uh, symbols all the time so i just don't know if you'd do the same with that but uh, yeah i've never, never had a family heirloom that would be so that would be so interesting i'd want to keep it as well let's go yeah you guys um start your walk um unless there was something you want to talk about, you guys are welcome to talk at, at camp if you would like to, as you make your way down. Um, the night begins to fall and easiest camp ever, honestly. Um, <laughs> Compared to everything we've been doing in the valley? It's so easy. Um, Cake. <laughs> on, it's up to you if you even want to do Tiny Hut. Um, you're welcome to still do it, but you're no longer in the valley. Doesn't mean you're safe, but safer um i he would pull the group so what do you all think about uh sleeping under the stars tonight oh well, already asleep enjoy the fresh air bivouac out here on the on the ground uh yeah. Toldrick, uh, i have some of those spirits that you that you're carrying <laughs> oh yes of course gorbjorn screams Spirit. <laughs> Spirit. Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Gorbion, Gorbion. He meant ale. He meant alcohol, booze. It's okay. It's okay. No ghosts. No spirits here. It's okay. Oh, You're safe. I, it can't hurt you. I still see Loria though. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, there's there is Loria, but like Nana doesn't know about that. She met Loria once while she was in Tordrick, and she didn't really get much of an introduction. Yeah, Loria just kind of, you watch as she kind of like walks around a bit and then where you've kind of started to pass out, she she goes over and it looks like she wants to sit next to you and then she kind of like thinks to herself and she takes like a big step in the other direction and then lays down there. Aww. So I imagine a very tired and bedraggled uh, Fen takes a very long dram off of... Uh, off of Tordrick's, uh... I'm exposed! Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Cover your indecency! <laughs> uh, I've heard of wardrobe malfunctions, but this is ridiculous. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> Fen takes a, a, a very long swig off of Tordrick's cask, and it kind of walks over and, and strikes with his kukri and his flint and, and starts the fire and then just goes and sits against the tree and lets it all sink in. Just out for four hours at least. Yeah, that makes sense. Like Nana kind of like looks Fen's way at first, like wondering maybe if she can like take him aside for a minute, talk with him, but like he's sat down out and she's like I'll wait. <laughs> he needs the rest. Turn on the heels. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Cordrick will whisper in Finn's ear, seeing he's starting to rest to this go, hey, if you ever like want to have a marriage ceremony with Corbyron, just let me know. I'd be honored to run it. 
Right. But I don't I, I don't know what you're talking about. This follows him into his <laughs> dreams. No. And then he walks away. It's not a conversation I think I'm suited to have at the moment. And yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll talk again in the morning. Um thank you. I appreciate it, friend. Um I think Roshan would probably go over to talk with Gorbjorn and see see that he's already asleep and like sit there for a minute and to like listen to make sure he's snoring and then he would just probably go into Gorbjorn's pack and pull out a blanket and give it to him (laughs) um you check to see that he's sleeping and then you you tuck him in good night um, yeah. Is there anything anybody wanted to do before before the night? And if are people taking shifts? Uh, Tor- Nana Tor- will pray. take one. Hmm? Oh, Tordrick's praying. Oh, mm-hmm. Nana also- will also. Yeah, the three praying people need three to sit prayer. down and pray so that we don't get invaded by ghosts tonight. Um. Yeah. Um. Three religion checks, please. I, it's today, this tonight. Sense, are we praying the gay away? <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> technically speaking, it's a male and a female ghost. So um, we're praying the het away. It was a heterosexual relationship. We are praying the het away. Yeah, we, we will not stand that. for the het in this house. Daddy. Pray the love away? Can we just get back to being like buddies? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here for this romantic shit. Give me that platonic shit. Um, give me religion rolls, please. Um, 22. Fifteen. Yes, Saga? I, I would, I'm feeling a little bit um, shaky uh, after everything that's happened, so I'm going to uh, spend probably like an hour um, doing a circle of Lady Seder symbols around the camp, so I'm going to make my own dome, but it's just little Lady Seder crosses the whole way around, and then I'll just um, sit in the center, and, and tonight I want to say my normal prayers, and I also want to ask her, um, next time that uh, you help me learn a new thing, um, I know that late, m- most of the time I've been on my own, but now I have people that I that I travel with, and so I want something that helps everybody else instead of something that's for me. I want something that I can use to help out with my friends next time. Thank you. Um, that's all. Okay. Um, Eleven. Uh, okay. Oh. Um, Lady you, Seder loves you. Uh, you put out your, your request to Lady Seder that your next vision, your next gift be something helpful um, for the team. Um, you do not get a reply, but once again, not the weirdest thing in the world, but um, you feel very connected in your Lady Seder bubble. Uh, Tordrek, what did you get? 22. All right. Being out of the valley, it's almost like the floodgates are open and you can feel a connection again with the sea. And you just know that it's nearby and know that it is possible to be there and you feel strength and you can feel, for a moment it feels like you feel like a, a strong hand kind of squeeze your shoulder. And if you look back, nobody's there, but it's comforting. And you know that you're being watched over. Um, Nana, what'd you get? Uh, I rolled a 15. Um, You pray and you receive no communications and no feelings. All right, okay. Uh, Ro would like to make some tea for himself. (laughs) Tea, please. Um, Go ahead. Nana briefly considers asking him for some, but she's asked him for quite a bit, and she's got some vague memories of a couple different people asking him for some, and he might be running out, and he might need it, so he could do his thing. Okay, so um, you make some tea, um, two doses, so that you can get some sleep. Mm. Uh, uh, Nana, you said you'd like to take the first watch? Yeah. Um, roll me a d12 if you'd be so kind. I would be so kind. <laughs> it is me. I am kind. <laughs> Behold. Yeah. Also, my dice is catty corner, so let me try again. 
Uh, 11. Okay. Um, uneventful. You're even kind of, you get the feeling you could take your coat off. Um, that it won't, you won't die if you don't have like these coats on or something helping you. Amazing. Um, um, it's a quiet night. You can hear the sound of, you know, animals, which is uh, for the first time in a while, um, actually present. I think that actually does kind of like bring a little tear to Nana's eye. I think she had forgotten what woods sounded like, what a living forest sounded like, what life sounded like outside of the valley. And I feel like maybe all of that kind of hits her in the silence of this first watch of the night. And I think kind of off to one side of, of the camp far enough away that she can be outside of the circle of firelight so she can see, but I think she feels far enough away that she can kind of cry a little quietly to herself and, and not disturb anyone and just take in the nature that is here and come to terms with how long that it's been. The last time she was out in nature like this, she still had her brother. Um, you take a moment of, of relief and then comes a bit, bit melancholy um, and you cry softly during your watch, um, remembering your brother and also the relief of being finally outside of the valley. Who's taking our second watch? Well, Fen's not going to wake up unless anybody tell, unless somebody wakes him up. You need your rest. <laughs> Roderick well if needed. Um, absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah, Tordrick, go ahead and roll me a d12 if you'd be so kind. I will do so. Uh, 11. Ooh, another 11. I'll say if our third person rolls an 11, maybe you guys get something nice. Well, nobody lied to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tordrek, uh, pretty, pretty easy night. Um, the sounds of nature, the, it's actually as afraid as you've been in the valley. Um, and being outside is, is spooky enough. Being out in the woods at night is scary, but it's just like, I've had worse. <laughs> I have recently had weeks had of worse. I've had so much. Like sleeping in your bed, you know, after what we went through, right? Um, Tordrick is, um, he's drinking a little bit and he's got a little bit of feeling. He's feeling pretty positive with that, that touch on his shoulder. He's thinking about the nine sisters and, and, and what he's, what everyone and he's been through um, prior to meeting up. And he's kind of singing and he's moving, doing a little couple little dance steps to kind of move the time away is he hasn't practiced dance steps for a while and he feels dancing is going to be coming soon all right um, you spend your watch having a good time um who would like to take our third watch i can take it if uh oh well, i think i mean fens had double the the rest that he normally does so I mean, um, you said you weren't waking up unless somebody woke you okay, up. Okay, well, that's fine. Yeah. 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 That's fine. If, if Taga wants to, but... I mean, yeah. they've been through a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like, Finn and Tordred. Uh, everybody and Gorbjorn need to sleep. Everybody possessed by ghosts should take a nap, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Not so already took one. The Banshee gave her a nap. Yeah, <laughs> that Banshee. Great nap. Best sleep I've ever had in my life. <laughs> um... Saga, you are up. The dead. Um, go ahead and roll me a d12. Nine. Okay. Ah, oh, darn. Oh, oh well, no, no, that's okay. No, the statistics were very guys. against us. <laughs> um, easy night. There's, you know, once again, you're not in that bubble, but there is some safety to being outside the valley. Uh, you know that corruption still exists out here. It is just not as prevalent. Um, but it's nice um, compared to what you have been through. 
Yeah. I want to start making some bracelets. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, easy enough. You start spending, you spend the rest of your watch crafting little bracelets, I'm assuming, with the symbol of Lady Seder on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to do, I'm going to try to make some some that have little, uh, some, like, markings on them that, that I'll explain to everybody later so that people know. It's going to be secrets. Mm. Ooh, secrets! Secrets. Um, Saga, you take your watch until the morning comes. Um, and everybody starts to get up. Um, people who had ex- levels of exhaustion, you lose one of those levels. Um, so, <laughs> Nana, if you did have one, it's gone now. Hooray! Um, or Bjorn, you still have one level of exhaustion. Uh, Broggy kind of wakes up looking like shit. Um, oh. But besides that, you guys are outside the valley. You hear birds chirping in the morning. You wake up to the sound of animal life. Um, you can feel rays of sun on your face through the trees. That's pretty, it's pretty good. The simple things. The simple things. The simple things in life. Well, uh, I think that like the weather being this nice, uh, Nana's maybe like one of the first people to roll up out of bed, and she's actually making breakfast for the party. <laughs> she's in pretty good spirits. Roshan, could you roll me constitution, please? Huh? Um, non-saving throw. Um, that's an 11. Okay. Well, there's our 11. <laughs> oh. oh. Sorry, it's one roll too late. Uh, <laughs> damn it, damn it. <laughs> um, Roshan, Boom. you wake up very sore. Very groggy. You feel like, you feel like shit. And you know you don't have like a level of exhaustion, but your body just does not feel like it's waking up and you have like a bit of aches and pains, a um, bit of a headache coming on. Um, he will uh, put just a single pinch of tea into the same cup he used last night and uh, get some hot water off the, off the campfire and pour it on in. Hair of the dog, huh? Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, after, the tea man. Does Nana notice that? I mean, I don't think. The, um, are you trying to be stealth? Nana's cooking. Um, yeah. I am cooking. So, I'm right there at the campfire. Um, give me stealth or sleight of hand. Um, and Nana, what's your passive perception? My passive perception is 14. Saga is definitely bothering her if she's because Saga's the first one awake and she's awake. So they're she's chit chatting. <laughs> Oh, um, I like that. Yeah, so he he did that back at his bag. So uh, I got a seventeen. Okay, um, yeah, he valid. Might, you, didn't, you see that he's making himself something to drink, but you don't exactly know the contents. How does he, looks he look? Like shit, but okay. Not- so he looks straight up like shit. Um, Roshan, about thirty-ish minutes pass, and you feel almost instantly better. Ugh. Ugh. Mm. just needed a. Just needed some breakfast. <laughs> a nice, beautiful- Most important meal of the day, haven't I always told you so? Uh, Nana in high spirits mm-hmm. makes everybody some some food and some drink. Everybody wakes up to warm food in a slightly warm morning. Um, it's not frigid. It's not blowing ice and snow up our asses. We don't have giants. Breathing down our necks. This is a beautiful morning, isn't it? On, on those standards, yeah. yes, yes, Nana. One hundred percent. It's day and night from where we've been for weeks on end. Is all I'm saying. More than a day and a night. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys are welcome to pack up and start heading out. Um, Nana is going to check on Ave now that we're out of the cold. How is he doing overnight? I mean, it is still it is still cold. It is cold enough for there to be snow, um, okay. uh, for snow to at least stick a bit. Um, he is certainly not as frozen in appearance, but mm. it's um, it's not like he's completely defrosted. It's weird to talk about it like that, but. Um, like if you tried to move like part of him, he is—it's not going to move. Okay, so he's still fairly rigid. It, 
it doesn't seem like he'll be taking any damage from the general elements yet. Not yet, no. You don't know how it'll be later. Um, nobody that you've ever met has traveled with a corpse this long. Yeah, no, never, ever. It's you not a thing. Instantly disposed of because of the corruption. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> um, and the thing you notice when you go to check on him is that it doesn't, nothing's climbed its way on, but you can see the grass around him is almost just like all leaning in his direction. So he's just like a circle of grass around him, just all leaning. More subtle, but still creepy. Why do you, you keep managing to creep me out. <laughs> you're dead, God damn it. You're such a stupid fucking brother. Um, <laughs> Nana's just like muttering to herself as she's checking on Ave's wrappings and, and making sure everything's ship shape. The grass is creepy, but at least it's not active like vines sprouting up from the earth and trying to take him down with it. No, not, not nearly as intense. Um, Good. I am going to do a bit of a, a bit of, you know, the jump forward. So if there's things people wanted to do over the next three days, please uh, go ahead. Torch will, oh, oh, go ahead. Torch will, go ahead. Uh, Torch will go cast uh, locate object. Okay. Um, you do locate object on the crest um, and it has to be within a thousand feet. Correct. Um, you cast locate object and you can feel that like you can't even grab even a whisper of it. You know that it is very far away. Uh, okay. Still being hopeful, but it is not within a thousand feet. Okay. Um, so any traveling that he does every several minutes, as long as he can, he will continue to focus to see if he can get a feeling of it. Okay. It won't last long, but you know, just in case. Yeah. Um, I'll say throughout it as many times as you decide you want to do it um, during this trek, um, okay. you do not feel the crest. Okay. Okay. I will um, let I will let Nana know. Okay. Torch will let him let her know, and Torch will be unhappy, very unhappy about the fact he cannot make any contact with it. He cannot see where it's at or, or anything. Cannot feel what location. Don't worry yourself over it. Over it, all right, Torch. Honestly, it was a bit of a far shot for them to be anywhere within range. They were heading the way that we'd been coming from when they escaped, so if anything, we might find them closer to Galanda, maybe. Gulveg forbid they actually make their way there, but... Well, at least we know it's not close. Yeah. Thank you. The next night and every successive night until he's successful as soon as the sun starts setting and everybody starts making camp Fen's gonna wander off by himself and he's gonna try to bring back a deer like that's his goal is a deer uh any any meat will do um but he does thinks he want they, any help on any of these i i no, Fen just wants to bring back something nice for everybody so that he can you know, they all wake to the the fresh smell of venison or something over the grill. Like he just he just wants them to wake to something they haven't had in forever. And if you can find, and, and it's still winter, but if you can find wild onions or anything like that, uh, he he's just he's looking for something. He wants to cook a nice breakfast for everybody so they wake up to something refreshing and and replenishing. Okay, go ahead and give me three survival checks. Let's see how the days go. Oh, uh, that is a 14, a 24, and a 13. Okay, so the first night, um, the best you can find in the area is um, like some rabbits, things akin to that size. Uh, which you can bring back and cook um, and have fresh meat for the first time in weeks. Um, on the second day, you are able to bag this deer. Um, you are able to um, put it down swiftly um, and you are able to utilize it for food and whatever you may else be interested in. 
and are able to save some of it um, and preserve it for later. Um, and I'm sure you have enough for the next day if you still wanted to go um, out looking, but you do find some leaves and greenery that um, you know to be edible um, to kind of put something together that feels, um, feels nice. Maybe a vegetable stew or something. Yeah, just whatever, any tubers I can find or anything like that. We'll nice. put together, I don't, uh, get some deer bones so we can make some, you know, not beef bone broth, but, you know. Bone something. broth. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we've we'll, got a nice deer pelt that's not cured or anything yet, but we we have that in case we need more it's not fiber, but more leather. Um, mm -hmm. It'll be a while before it's... Yeah, still... good for trading, too. Yeah. Mm. Um, okay. Um, you were able to do that for the team. Is there anything else anybody wanted to do during this time? On the first night, uh, Ro would... Uh, I guess probably during the first day of traveling, Ro would approach Gorbjorn and ask him, um, so... How long were you sharing headspace with uh, whatever that was? Uh, what, what's the last thing you remember? I remember all, but I did not share. She took my head. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I suppose I didn't word that right. Um, when, when did that happen? Do you? Do you remember our conversation? You wanted to know who it was on that slime, right? Uh, only if you wanted to talk about it. You see, as he's mostly been covered up, but when we're having camp, he's like kind of like in his casual clothing. Um, the scar is the mark of banished in Orc. It was my father who gave it to me and let me to die in the wild. He is who I saw in Odin with the bull. Um, well, I, I guess you really kind of stuck it to him. Um, you're here with us, and uh, we're all family. All of us here, you can't go through something like that and not forge new bron bonds of brotherhood and something, I don't know. But... I hope, I hope he doesn't scare you. Uh, he has no power over you anymore. I faced him on that mountain. He has no hold on me, but I have yet to stick it to him. As like, he's probably like sharpening his blade at this point. <laughs> so <I was> like, <laughs> oh. Well, if that's something you, Gorby. <laughs> if that's something we encounter then i've got your back friend this pack it is it means the most to me i have your back thanks my emotions <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you guys have a beautiful moment together. Um, is there anything else anybody wanted to do? I also wanted to go up to Saga. Like, I know it wasn't me, but I'm sorry. I would never do that to you, and I never will again. It's um, it's okay. I, I I know it wasn't you. I, but but thank you. Uh, um, 
I, I appreciate it. And I think you, you need this as I place the ring in her hand. Oh, um. She's no, I like I won't let go of her hand as it's like oh, oh, in her hand. It's like Loria. She has answers for you. I can't talk for you. But um, isn't this how you talk to Lady Seder? And it's it's also like it's it's like a bone, no? Like it's I don't. It's a ring. It's fine. <laughs> uh, it is power. But then you won't be able to talk to Lady Seder as well. I can talk to you, and that's better. <laughs> oh. The, the temptation of actually talking to somebody who is Lady Seder is much too much. So uh, she'll, she'll, she'll try to put it on. It's like probably way too big at the moment, but... And the yeah. second you put it on, it shrinks down to fit your finger. Oh, uh, um, th thank you very much, Garbjorn. I I appreciate it. And she kind of just takes his hands and then gives him a little hug. Uh, uh, oh, uh, I actually just finished um up this. If you want it, uh, she, she for the past three days she's been working on those bracelets, making sure they look perfect. Um. And so she just holds up uh, to you uh, a, a dark blue uh, cloth bracelet and stitched on in, on the inside is there's a symbol of Lady Seder and then on the other side there's a golden circle. And okay, if something happens again, I'm gonna ask you what's on the inside of the bracelet and, and you'll know that it's the golden circle that you stole that also ended up getting you like kind of kidnapped, like got, got, all that crazy stuff happened. But, but you know, and I know, and everyone else knows, but. If someone were to, like, take over your brain, they wouldn't know. So, it's for you. <laughs> when, it, when you help him tie it on, he's, like, looking at it very fondly. It's like, this is my favorite treasure. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I'm so excited. I want to go give everyone else the as well. Thank you so much, Kofion. Gives you another hug, and then runs off. Oh. <laughs> And uh, she, she'll also, uh, yeah, so she'll give those bracelets to everyone else. Um, Nana, uh, for you, you have like um, a light uh, yellowish kind of greenish bracelet. And then on the inside, of course, there's a symbol of Lady Seder. And then there's also a pickle. Um, it's from when I stayed over at your house and I ate all of your food and a big old jar of pickles. Um, <laughs> so you'll know. <laughs> Oh no, that's from when I stayed over for our sleepover um, for those days, uh, right when we met for the first time. That's wonderful. That's honestly, yeah. that's a very dear memory to me, Saga. That was a wonderful time. Thank you. Yes, of course. Um, uh, Tordrick, uh, I have yours, and it's sort of like a, um, a little bit of a coppery one. And on the inside, there's um, like uh, piano keys. Uh, black and white piano keys. And that's that's from the time when we were dancing um, in 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 the in the cavern on those oh, magical stairs. Um, <laughs> and there's of course a symbol of Lady Sage on the inside as well. That one's for you, um, Roshan. Uh, yours is like a, a darker red to go with the rest of your aesthetic. <laughs> and uh, on the inside, there's a there's a black smiley face with a box on, around it. Uh, that's from the happy door that we talked to. Um, yes, thank you. Yeah, I and then, it. and then, uh, Fen, uh, you bring bring you this, and it's like a dark green, and on the inside there's uh, a golden pair of uh, hands shaking, and, and that's from when we shook hands that one time, uh, after Aww. we were all possessed uh, with fear. Um, but that was nice. Uh, and there's a simple lady said. I'm sorry for hurting you. Oh, uh, it's, it's okay. No, no, no. You're possessed, but now you won't be anymore because we have the bracelets and we'll know. Um. And Fen ties it onto his quiver. All 
right. That's all. I'll mm. keep this with me. Thank you. All right. You hand out your bracelets, which is a symbol of your friendship, and also a way to root out ghosts. Yeah! Uh, Anti-ghost bracelets. You got yeah! Got a Power of friendship! <laughs> yeah! Um, uh, during the time that you guys are out, um, uh, Broggy's talking to you, Saga. Um, <clears throat> oh, I'm so sorry, Broggy. I didn't make you a bracelet. <laughs> oh, no! Oh. I totally That'll forgot. come next. <laughs> I, I will you? get started right now. I oh, I, Broggy, I guess I'm not the only one who doesn't like you. No, oh, oh my, no, of course. Uh, I love you, Broggy. I don't I'm expect so to get possessed by a ghost because I am not weak. Of out of character, that was out of character. Um, I just... Broggy was talking to you, Kyle. <laughs> he was talking out of character to you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Broggy's just speaking to you. He doesn't seem bothered by the fact. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the vision I had. Oh, oh, are you sure? What did it, did it come true? Is it, did you do uh, that? Yes. Um, part of it came true and that is why I, I thought I would speak of it. Um, explain a bit. The first part of my vision was was mostly memories from my childhood, which I still do not fully understand. And the, the second part was you stuck in a, a spider's web, a, a den of twisting, s sticky web and vines. And I saw us exiting together and if I didn't, there was something that was going to swallow you up. Oh. Um, I realized after being in the vines and seeing that, that monster, uh, I, so I had to come back because you had to get out because my vision was getting you out and it was very important. And I was afraid because I'm sure I could fail. No, no, as long as you follow your heart, the visions always work out. Um, it's, it's like, it's almost like a prophecy, it, it, it'll, as long as you know what it's supposed to happen, it'll happen, and you just move in what feels right. I I'm so glad that it worked out for you. I'm sorry that you were so scared. It is rather scary. It is, isn't it? You're incredibly brave if you deal with this all the time. Oh, they're, they're usually not this bad. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is this is a lot lately. Uh, I, I think it's just because we're getting so much stronger and getting probably closer to, to, to goals, to Lady Seder's goals. All right. Well, this is the... Besides all of you, this is going to be the first people I've come in contact with for a long time. And I wonder how much people have changed, you know? Hmm. I, uh, that's a good question. Well, people change everywhere I go um, when I travel from place to place. So, yeah, I mean, if these people don't treat you well, we'll move on to the next town. It'll be all right. All right. Um, thank you for everything you've done. Well, thank you. I, I, I expect your... Oh, oh well, since that, that um, vision is finished up, uh, would you like to try the... The, the drops again? Should I should I give you those again? Oh, um, there was there was more. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I'll tell you if it becomes becomes relevant. Um, mm. They're strangely specific, right? They're just oddly specific, and they don't make sense until you're like, oh, I'm in a forest of vines. That makes sense. Yes, yes, I know. <laughs> I that is the that is the funniness of Lady Seder. She likes to keep it mm. keep it humorous. Um, yes, she's. I'm sure she's quite a jokester. Yes. 
Um, yeah. But it always works out. That's why I say it always works out exactly as expected. Well, I hope you're right. Um, you guys move along for three days. Yes, Nana? Well, just one of the nights, I did want to take an opportunity to uh, take a watch shift with Fen, just to be able to hash some things out with them together. Okay, I that's fine. It's, I imagine it's probably night two when we get the deer. Yeah. After having like a good big feast of a dinner, and it's just no, I, probably I think, the nicest spread we've had. I think since, you. I think you like, get. I think you get the deer. I think you come out hunting with me on the second night, and I think. You, oh. I think Nana gets the, gets the kill on the deer. Wow. Okay. All right. If that's Go how you want it. to play it narratively. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, I, I think the first night I come back with a couple of rabbits, and then I bring you out with me, and I think that. You know, your your friend's good luck charm, so. Teamwork. We're well practiced, no? Yep. Anyhow, go ahead. It's your turn. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, um, I think that um, that night after the others have gone to bed, we're all full sated. Um, Nana's going to take that first watch together with Fen and... Um, sit herself alongside of him and um, so I know that um, I wasn't maybe in the best place when um, when you needed me especially badly back there in the vines and I'm sorry about that but um, I'm here now and I know that what you saw shook you badly I'm I saw her I saw her on the face of that beast truer than I remember her in my own dreams it's only been two years I forgot what she looks like I had forgotten her face, and that beast remembered better than I did. Fen? What she looked like. I know. And used it to terrify me, and used it to attack my friends. Yeah. I saw her face as if she was there with us. And I think having slew that beast, I'll never see her as true again as that. Last thing I saw was Saga blessedly destroying that creature. And the truest memory I'll ever have of Nettle. Falling into that chasm and then we couldn't find it afterwards. I'll never see that again. That's the last I'll ever see of her. And it's only two years. And if I'm lucky, I'll never return home. If I'm unlucky, I'll live another three, four hundred years. And every year, every day that passes, she'll fade further from my memory. No one made art of her like they should have while she was alive. No one captured her image. And she's going to fade further and further from my memory. And she will until the day I Thankfully, die. Fun. I won't tell you I know your pain. I can't tell you that. But I know something like it. I understand. I, I know you've lost your brother. 
You lost your father, I know, I know. I'm not trying to make this about me. I I just want to tell you. I understand, and I appreciate your friendship. Go ahead. Yeah. I only want to tell you. Though her face might fade, you can't tell me that's really Nettle. What do you remember really about Nettle? Your dearest, most precious memory. You told me the story not that long ago. Think back on it. Tell me. Tell it to me again. I don't want to relive moments. I... she... She's the dearest friend I've ever had. She's the kindest soul I've ever known. She did nothing but good for the people around her. She made me happy to be here. And every day since she has left has been the darkest I've known. This darkness took her from me, took her from this world. And and the darkness advances. It left so little of her. When they found her and the others... They didn't find much of them. It's from bits and pieces. It was gruesome. They had gruesome by the standards of a... of a... (laughs) of a mauling. It was gruesome by the standards of a mauling. We've seen those taken by wolves. We've seen those taken by bears. There was so little left. Um, I know that all right I know this pain is something that is lingered all these two years and I don't know that it's ever going to really fade but one thing I think that we've both got to carry through is that neither of our loved ones would want us to die for want of them. I don't think Nettle would want you to waste away, to mourn, to grieve, to die over her. And I don't think Ave would want the same from me or from you. No, and that's why I haven't laid down and died. That's why I fight on. That's, That's why we will fight on. We will fight this back. We will see Ave's visions to their, to their ends. We'll destroy this corruption. We'll make sure it doesn't afflict others. But when that's over, I don't know what battles there are to win. I don't know what happiness there is to find. Come work with me. I don't know what I'm going to be doing, but I'm the last Hemming. At the very least, I'll have to pick the new leader, the new chief, if they don't insist on making me one. I'll need your help, wherever I am. Uh, What's to say I don't help them make you the new chief? Well, then I'll need an advisor now, won't I? Mm. Someone to watch my back? No, and I'll see us through to the end of this. For Ave... For Saga, for Tordric, for Gorbjorn and Roshan and me, see us through to the end. I'll do my very best. I promise you that. And when all this is over, let's give Nettle maybe a gift. And what can we give her? Let's see what we can find along the way. Okay, I'm, I'm going to step in now as both of you um, speak and comfort each other. Um, the second night turns to morning and the third day comes. And on the third day, Tordrek, a familiar smell, the smell of salt in the air the smell of the coast 
as you all approach closer, you can start to see glimmers of the ocean as you come up to this. Um, you can see that the road continues straight and then towards the cliff, going down a nice set of stone steps inset into the mountain. You can see perched at the coast below you is Arentoft. The large fishing community, um, the shine of the ocean behind it, the smell of the sea. You for the first time are seeing civilization. You are officially at Arentoft. Smell that air. It's blue. <laughs> yeah. The water's blue. Yeah. Can you believe it? I've only I've heard been, I've stories. Been, I've been east. I've seen the straits. It's gray and green and rapid and frothing. The water's blue. <laughs> or Drek, you watch the waves and it's almost just like it's pulling you. Is, yeah. uh, is there a beach there in that area? Oh, yeah, you can see the beach. There is a beach that's not just rocks. Oh, oh, he. <clears throat> um, he starts just heading Detour. right. Detour. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, it's at Arentoft. Yeah. Arentoft has um, its own. The beach. Yeah, Arentoft. Oh. Yeah. Well, at the beach. Um, Cordrick is like, as he sees the city, he like closer, like, boom. Um, if if there is a if, if there is a way, uh, he's going to go like straight, not to where the people are, but just uh, at first at least he's going straight to the sand and right to the beach. Um, right. He's like he starts singing uh, songs about the the nine sisters very loud um, <laughs> and, and praising and, and kind of skipping along and and uh, yeah that's that's where he's headed. All right, you guys watch Tordrek peel off from the group start rushing down the steps and he's making a beeline to the water as you can hear him skipping <laughs> moving faster than he's maybe ever seen him move has uh, he mentioned his his affinity for the sea um probably not much or he's maybe done it in passing but it's never been like a full-out conversation but he is gone um, uh, he's comments, he's here comments. for it yeah and uh, when he hits the beach he, he starts taking his clothes off to jump in the water naked yeah Tordrek full <laughs> You guys watch him disappear into the distance as he makes it to the sea. Um, it takes him a minute, but he finally gets there and he's just naked and in the water. Um, and the second you're in the water, um, um, just the spray of the sea in your face and it feels like soft kisses on your cheeks and uh. being in the water feels like you're being embraced and you are finally back in the ocean and it feels so nice as you swim around. Um, Tordrek peels off from the group um, you guys know there are things to do in Arentoft. Um, and you also have a cart and things. Yeah. <laughs> something you wanted to do or... Um, Nana's gonna go a looking for an inn for us to get rooms in. If y'all want to do your own thing, do your own thing. Nana's going to find us an inn and... God, I don't know where we're gonna put up the sled with Ave on it. We'll figure that out in a hot second, I guess. Uh, I want to run to the beach, too. Yeah. Uh, Saga, you're the welcome beach. to run to the beach. Yeah. There's a lot of water. Come on. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Saga probably sees Tordra go, and she's like, hell yeah. <laughs> and she's gone, um, uh, making her way to the beach as well. Um, Nana, you're going to make your way into town. Is anybody else heading into town? I'll head into town. <clears throat> okay. Um, I think Fen's gonna do the hard business of trying to find a place that has an ice house to try to arrange storage of Ave for the time being. A magical coffin of ice. Uh, well, <laughs> that, or if you want to try to find that? Dagwood directly. Well, any we any place him. that any place that has a you know that stores meat or ale or anything like that, you know, I might be able to arrange go for them to to keep him for the time being that that's you know, nana shouldn't have to do that row row shouldn't have to do that um so, so that's what fen's gonna do Fen, go ahead and roll me intelligence i'll give you advantage actually i'll head with fen if rose gonna help nana uh, 18 
Okay. Um, uh, the first thing I will say is, um, first off, it's pretty cold, uh, but finding storage isn't a bad idea. If you present this as a body, people are going to freak out. And they're going to burn it. Um, people do not preserve corpses here. People get rid of them. So it's up to you if you want to try and find a place or if you wanted to find Dagwood or if you wanted to hide it somewhere. It's up to you. I, uh, I don't think I would have done any of this without consulting Nana. So whatever Nana says, that's what I'll, that's how I'll approach this. Well, if you can make contact with Dagwood, maybe he can advise us on somewhere that Ave could stay. But if you can't find anything, him, then do we know anything about him? Do we know is he a is he a, a human, an elf, a dwarf? A, is he? He's a friend of Ave's. I mean, and Nana will hand him the the will scroll and and like kind of like look through it. Like, literally, the only line about it is, in Arentoft, you will find an old friend of mine named Dagwood. Dagwood has made something to help us focus the power in the artifact. Once you have it, let Dagwood give me last rites. That's all we have about the guy. All right, um, I'll... I'll set out on our quest to find Dagwood. Um, where would you like to keep Ave until then? I... Hmm... Should I watch him outside of town? Well, I think I'd like to have your assistance mm. helping me. Um, Why don't the two of you maybe take Ave with you, perhaps to find Dagwood? If nothing else, perhaps Dagwood can then turn you in a good direction. And can we? perhaps we can, like, put some rug or cloak over over the oh, contents. The winter of clothes, the yeah. Yeah, the yeah, winter clothes. Pile our, pile our winter clothes on top of him. The yeah, uh, that'll insulate him for one and hide him from view for another. Yeah. Won't and, look quite so much like a corpse on a sled. Yeah, and you guys don't have to split up if you don't want to. You guys, um, I know half the party went swimming, which I yeah, yeah. Uh, but <laughs> which I fully get. Right. Um, but you guys are welcome to stick together unless you wanted to split up. Uh, uh, multiple things can be accomplished together or separate. I'm fully Ronald up. Roshan, would you like to arrange lodging or would you like to help us find Dogwood? Uh, I, I'll happily go arrange lodging. Well, that'll keep us to a buddy system that way, I All suppose. Right. You and you and uh, Gorbjorn can watch each other's backs. Ro and I will watch each other's. And uh, Saga and Tordrick will take in the scene on the beach, I suppose. I'm building what a sandcastle. <laughs> Of, of the people is. we've seen so far, what are, they, are they mostly humans? Are they dwarves? Are they... Um, as you guys make your way into Arentoft, um, mostly human. Um, there does seem to be a pretty good dwarven community here. Um, hmm. You see like a group of dwarves like um, uh, carrying like these huge full boxes on their backs, uh, making their way up steps and around town. Um, an occasional half-elf, um, but mostly human and then dwarf comes in second probably for um groups of people here um when all of you enter before you separate um <laughs> you can see a group of kids run by and they're playing and they're like um fighting with sticks and you see one kid like clocks the group and comes over uh, a little girl and she has like little braids and she's like are you are you new well yes yes we're very new well, I could maybe show you around town. That would actually be quite helpful. Uh, I wonder, um, <laughs> would perhaps <laughs> would perhaps a gold coin mm. be worth the while of an expert tour giver? Jesus. Um, I think that would be very good. Thank you very much. <laughs> And you hear some other kids like, oh, gold! And, <laughs> and literally, Nana only has nine gold coins and no other currency in her inventory. <laughs> so you hand the little girl a gold? One gold coin, yes. Okay. Um, I can't instantaneously make change. Okay. And she like looks at it and it's just like eyes wide. Okay. Um, so sometimes new people, they like to sleep and they like to eat 
at Undertow. So is that an inn? It's an inn, and it's also where they go to drink. I see. Mm -hmm. Do lots of people like to go there? Yes, it's very popular. I heard it's because of their buxom. Ha, is is that a, uh, is that a food? I don't know, but my dad talks about it a lot. I see. All right. We'll ask about the buxom. Perfect. I've heard it's great. Uh, is there anything else? Um, uh, that's really the main thing unless you're looking for fish. Well, um, actually, we wanted to find somebody. Um, Named for a sandwich, a Reuben or something. Uh, Dagwood. Dagwood. There we go. <laughs> We're not there. <laughs> Oh, this is well, I mean, this is before the party split up. This oh, was okay. just Never after mind. we came into town. Like, this is a slight time skip yeah. back. Um, the okay. girl kind of squints at you. Oh, um, I'm not allowed to go over there. Oh, well, you don't need to go anywhere near. Anywhere near. Just um, point us in the direction. We only needed to ask him a question. Okay, I'd get in trouble. Uh, uh, we don't want to get you in trouble. Um, uh... Uh, there's, um, they have a, a funny looking house, um, and, um, she kind of points you around and is like, if you go this way and go over there, um, mm-hmm. you'll eventually find it. You'll notice it because it looks bad. Bad? How? Uh, bad, like broken. Oh. Uh-huh. Oh, dear. Yeah. Um, is, um, Dag what? Also bad? That's what my dad says, but I've never seen Dagwood before. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, all right. Well, by all means, we don't want to get you in trouble with your father. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Your your tour is over. Um, And she fucking books it. Uh, I mean, that's fine. We have the two major things we wanted to know anyway, and we can find the fish market by the smell. Yeah, certainly. Um. (laughs) Good morning, ladies. Could I have uh, peeled off while she was getting the tour? Sure. Um, I would like to go see if I could root out the friendly neighborhood spice seller. (laughs) The spice must flow. Go ahead and roll me perception. What are the rest of you guys doing besides Team Beach? Um, A question about Team Beach. Uh Uh-huh. Tordrick had made several different uh, along the time that he was on the beach, uh, like little huts to live in. Uh, you... Oh no! Oh no! Um, Frank, um, you froze. Um, Where are you, Frank? Come back to us. The house uh, is on the beach. Um, so, house is on the beach. I'll deal with that in a moment. Um, what are the rest of you guys doing? Oh, oh. yeah, he's gone. Uh, uh, <laughs> I got a nineteen. Okay. Ooh. Um, so what is the other team doing? I, for two reasons, but also because I think it'd be real funny if, because at, uh, the end of episode one, I ran into Roshan coming out of the herbalist shack. <laughs> if I was also seeking out an herbalist because Fen wants something that helps him have dreamless sleep. He doesn't want to dream anymore. Frank. Okay. He wants to, um, he wants to find it. some herb that he can take before he goes to sleep that makes him not have dreams. Okay, so you're also currently splitting off from the group. Uh, d- just, uh, d- Gorbjorn, uh, just uh, watch my back for a moment. I'll be right back. And that's that's it. I just, just want to dip into a shop. That's all. Yeah, you just watch Roshan once again, like, come um, out of an alley. Uh, <laughs> Weird how this- What are the chances? Um, Nana, what are you doing? Um, I think with this new information, maybe as she sees like Fen kind of peel off and Ro kind of peel off and Gorbjorn's kind of like hanging out in the alley, um, she'll kind of like maybe watch where they go off and if Fen and Ro kind of like hang out for a short minute, kind of like 
awkward <laughs> shuffling. Uh-huh. Uh, she'll kind of like nudge Gorbjorn and um, ask him, so you want to go find that broken house? Mm. Yes, but I, I was asked to watch back. Oh, of course, of course, of course. Um, All right, I'm back. I- I'm back. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Uh, is Ro back as well? Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say. Is he just uh, kind of like doing his own thing? Um, Ro is technically what they're doing is not completed, so Ro is not returned unless they want to. Um, you have. I, not- I'm just saying they didn't have anything for me. That's okay. Yeah, Very same good. for you, Roshan. You currently have not found that person, but you're con- you may continue to look. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think Ro will continue to just wander around. Okay. So uh, if he seems to want to do that on his own, then maybe the three of us. Yeah, you guys are going to go look for Dagwood? Yeah, let's find Dagwood. That seems preeminently important, and we can always find the inn. <laughs> Just um, what Torjak was, what I was talking about doing real quickly yeah. is is building some sort of shelter out like he did when uh, several times when he was on the beach because uh, he wants to, he's going to send message to Nana that um, that he's at the beach and he's going to build a hut. Uh, and that way, if anything needs to be stored in there and not be took into the proper part of town, it can be put in there. Okay. Um, you were oh. that message. Um, also for Team Beach, Broggy is 100% Team Beach. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. And a hundred percent follows suit with um, uh, Tordrek. A DNA test. He's one hundred percent that beach. <laughs> <laughs> um, he also takes off his clothes uh, and goes into the ocean. Uh, woo woo! Definitely not as excited and happy as Tordrek is, but uh, gods and clerics skinny dipping everywhere under the water. Um, Nana, Gorbjorn, and Fen, you continue forward. Uh, following yeah. that little girl's directions. Yeah, um, yeah it sticks out kind of like a sore thumb. Um, mm. the, a two-story uh, wooden home. Um, they have steps. There's a broken step in the front. Um, you can see that um, you can't see inside any of the windows. They're all completely blocked out. Uh, the house is in disrepair. Um, flip the page. Woo! Uh, you can also, um, as you walk closer, you can get the, the smell of incense in the air and spices. Uh, and you can see in front of the door um, is there's a dangling rope next to it. Uh, like like a, a pull rope? Like one? You're welcome ding, to ding. pull. Um, Garbiard reaches <laughs> over and pulls it. All right, there he goes. Uh, you do hear an instant jingling of bells um, coming from inside. And, um, one minute, one minute. <laughs> um, and you hear, boo, boo, doo, doo, boo, boo. Oh, this ah. is not what I was imagining. Um, you hear a bunch of things kind of get knocked around a bit, <laughs> the rustle and one second, uh, um, take your time. Don't hurt yourself. And, um, the door cracks open just a little and you're looking at eye level and realize that's incorrect. And you look down. Um, and you see um, a being um, maybe three-ish feet tall, um, head completely cloaked, um, piece over its mouth. You can see that like a kind of um, large nose is pushing the fabric forward. And it's kind of obvious, this like green tint of skin and like these kind of um, these yellowed eyes that they're trying to kind of like keep like covered. And you see their hands are covered in bandages that were quickly wrapped. Oh. Um, and you can see a tuft of like very obviously fake fur like sticking out from under the hood like a head of hair um, and this person <laughs> up you. Um, hello how may I help you um, we were looking for Dagwood we were told he might live here um, you watch um, uh, the creature squints up at you and then looks off to the side and keeps their eyes to the side while speaking. Dagwood may or may not be present currently. I do not know the best time to return, so please do not. Thank you. Wait, and please, please, wait, please, please, wait, please, please, my brother. I'm, wait, oh, please. A second, Gorbjorn puts a hand to it. Um, <laughs> it's not moving. <laughs> um, this little, it's just, little guy starts freaking out. Uh, 
please, please. My brother Ave wanted me to find Dagwood. Dagwood, Dagwood I'm sorry. Um, and I, he watches like scuffles away, um, kind of clawed feet visible that were tried to wrap up in fabric. Um, uh, easy enough for you guys to realize that this is a goblin um, oh. uh, who is running towards the back. Dagwood, um, and like kind of like knocks over a bookshelf and like tries to like oh, back up and then oh, the room wait. only clutter books and papers and <laughs> thingamajigs. The place is stuffed to the brim and there's only a thin path that one could walk. And you watch as the goblin like disappears into the back as I'm assuming you guys sort of pursue. Um, yeah. Pursue um, I'd, I'd stay outside. With, okay. With the sled? That's Somebody gotta probably for the best. Um, yeah, Nana is so going fun. in after the goblin. Uh, Fen, what are you doing? Staying outside as well. Okay. Nana, you take pursuit inwards. Yeah. And, Less uh, scary to the goblin. This <laughs> um, continues to screech. Um, Dagwood, Dagwood, they're inside. I'm sorry. <laughs> I. We don't mean any harm. We're just here on behalf of my brother Ave. Please, please. I only want an audience. I only want to talk. Please. A door that you pass flings open and knocks over things instantly, which you see the goblin instinctually is trying to catch everything. Partially <laughs> <laughs> buried under a pile of, of rubble. Oh, no! Um, standing in the doorway is a tall, um, a six foot tall woman, uh, pale skin. It looks like she like barely touched by the sun, like incredibly pale, um, has messy, long black hair that's pinned up and away from the face. Um, uh, you can see that, um, her jaw is very angular and she has like very strong features and she's wearing this, um, this not incredibly long black robe um, that hangs a bit open at the side. Um, you can see there's some fur um, kind of covering at the certain seams for warmth. And the front exposes the center of a very flat chest, um, which is just very exposed as one of the sleeves kind of slips down to the side. Um, she looks you dead in the eye, which involves her looking down at you. I'm Dagwood, and that is where we are going to stop for tonight. <laughs> um, thank you all so much for being up with you. No, 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 guys, it's been, there we go. It's been good, guys. Time and we're out. off. Uh, it's woo. been a great episode. The second I have to be a person, it's all over. Um, yep. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, if you want to keep up with us, um, we are at Backs of Gods on Instagram and Twitter. We have art on the Instagram. It's real nice, real cute. Uh, if you want to join us over there. Um, also, we have some amazing other programs on the Dice Cult. Oh, and look at those beautiful dice. Maybe a link will pop up in the chat. I don't know. Things are crazy. Ooh, um, so? Hey, um, Patty, would you like to? Uh, no, wrong order. Frank, what's happening tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, tomorrow we will be doing Legends of Fiea at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, getting deep into a bit of a murder mystery that's going on. Uh, and all kinds of drinking shenanigans with the characters. Yeah. Yep. No, drinking seems to be a theme with you. And oh, man, I'm trying to quit. <laughs> you just, <laughs> I, go, it just it's just, I keep having to do it for d and D. It's I gotta. Um, what's happening on <laughs> Wednesday, Abby? I have a dice and drinking problem. <laughs> uh, well, uh, at 7.30, uh, there is Roll Incorporated, the other D&D show that I am a part of. Uh, that asshole, Kieran, is back. So we oh, with that him. fucking guy. Oh, that <laughs> oh, it's just oh. so much Bummer. the worst. Just, you just gotta you just gotta come see how horrible he is. You gotta, oh. Honestly, and for nothing else, go see how bad he is on Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. And you won't believe how the worst he is. Yes. And yeah. on Saturdays, uh, we are going to be having, possibly, depending on the schedules, we'll keep you guys posted. Um, mm -hmm. It would normally be Vampire the Masquerade. Uh, can't make any promises, but if you show up, I'm sure maybe... Somebody will be here. Something will be happening, at least maybe <laughs> a, a rerun or something, or, or the whole thing. You just have to check on the Instagram and the Twitter, and I'm sure you'll know exactly what's going on if you want to see vampires and a 90-year-old vampire lady who's just living her best life, you know? 
sexy ass 90 year old vampire lady that's living her best life listen she know um (laughs) uh, thank you all so much for watching with us today we truly appreciate it Uh, we love having you guys here and telling you a story um same time same place next week on monday at seven um see you then bye everybody bye thanks for coming to see us thank you everybody bye